Welcome back, guys, to the Paladins Minor League. That's right. I'm here on the desk now. I'm no longer commentating. Luckily, they thought I was good enough to be able to be put on the desk, and now here I am. But, of course, I have a friend with me. I have Gore. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've moved from that side to this yeah. side. Even. That's impressive. <laughs> yeah, I mean that is correct, and I'm excited to see. <laughs> I'm excited to see what we have in store for us for North America. We spent all this morning and a little bit of this afternoon right into Europe, and of course now we're going to be getting right into North America for the number one and number two seeded teams, actually. Yeah, and this has actually been like historically kind of a three-two. Like this is a lengthier set between these two guys, so. This is today, in my eyes, specifically for Hype Unit up there, you know, undefeated. Mm -hmm. This is their chance to not just take the reins and kind of keep themselves like 7-0. and First off, it's a phenomenal score to, to have at this point in the split. But also to be able to come in and just say, you know what? We are hands down the best team. Not, right. Like no one can even step to us. Right, yeah, exactly. I mean, clearly the dominating lead is they have, once again, you mentioned it before, 6-0, and oh, Sanguine's 4-2, and two, and, of course, the next set after this one, of course, will be Exile and 5-Stack, where they're both number 3 and number 4 seeded teams, yeah. respectively. But, of course, I mean, Hype Unit, undefeated. What else can you say about them in the minor league? They're an extremely good team, really powerful players, and they know their stuff, that's for sure. And that's the thing. I think really powerful players is probably the best way to word it. I mean, mm -hmm. You look at two players who were in the PPL earlier this year, Dethroner and Payne coming down, and they feel more at home here with this team than they did while they were up in the big league kind of coming through. This has been much more dominating. You can tell that they feel more comfortable and they have way more control over their roles now. And whether you want to credit that to having right. to like spending that time in the minor league and kind of refining those skills right. to get them to this point or if they had them and now they're truly shining out it either one works but i mean along with them having like tape by their side like it's five names that are incredibly good have been incredibly good in the minor league all year when they've been playing and i at this point it, it, they are easily the team to beat yeah, that, I mean, that's much for so sure difficult. for anyone in the minor league. They definitely have to look up to them to be able to fight back. And, of course, I mean, Sanguine today, they're going to want more than anything yeah. to be able to try and take this one off of them to be the ones to say that, hey, we be hype unit 6-0 and already. I mean, once again, Sanguine's no slouch either. I oh, mean, Sanguine no. has some pretty good players on their team as well. And that's, I think, the biggest thing for them is is looking at that. Honestly, when you shuffle these teams, if you had asked me beginning of the split, and honestly at the beginning of the split, I, I probably would have said something like this like on Esports Weekly or whatever, but it would have been, who's going to take it? Mm -hmm. I have no idea. Out right. of the two of these teams, it, they seem relatively equal. I mean, Poison has been up at the top as well. Baller Steve, in my mind, is hands down one of the best supports we have. Right. I think like if you're in a, in a list of 10 supports – I think there's even some PPL supports that Baller Steve might be able to beat out. Like, he has right. been a phenomenal player. And so looking at Sanguine, like, they, they are just as locked in. They just haven't been quite as successful as Hype Unit. Yeah, I mean, of course, we have two really good teams. But we do want to actually see the map bands as well to see what both of these teams have taken off of the board for us to really see what we have a feel for. Timbermill and Stonekeeper both gone. Sanguine gets rid of Stonekeep. Timbermill is gone from Hype Unit. And in response to that, Fish Market and Shattered Desert are both gone as well, which is weird because I believe we saw Shadow Desert today as well. I mean, yeah. I haven't really seen people ban that as much as I've seen. There have been two sets in a row where they ban Bazaar. Yeah. Which is, which is interesting. I haven't seen that. It feels like, again, some of these teams, it's it's getting into the we know you're good at XYZ mm -hmm. or we know we're bad at XYZ. Right. So we are banning either what we're uncomfortable with or we're banning what you are really good at. And so trying to control that can be one route. We, you know, like been, we've been looking at the kind of the map discussion and there's a certain extent at the end of the day, I mean, especially in a best of five, mm -hmm. you can't practice every single map. You can't right. have three or four strategies on every single map, even if you are, are able to kind of get practice on them all. So you eventually escalate on, on a few of them, and those become your best ones. Right, exactly. I mean, they start off with the Genos ban, which is really, really interesting. Of course, after this recent patch, I mean, the damage M characters are a yeah. little bit less impactful. Genos not really being changed as much at all. I mean, Atlas is getting rid of typically see him as well i mean you know we're probably going to see some of the more standard bands i imagine will oh yeah especially on bright marsh so i mean <laughs> yeah i mean this is this is all pretty textbook yeah honestly so this is probably going to be makoa i'm just going to throw it out there no, there those go. are the four you should get the most used to i think right, right. now those are the right. the like atlas makoa can win games in the right hands but they can win games right 
and Genos Willow can win games. Genos, it's not always up to him, so we right. might see him kind of slip through. But he is in that area, and I would say in that conversation, maybe even more so than Furia, but I think he might not deserve to be as banned as he is. I think right now he's going to be the hot commodity. I mean, 15% damage amp to three people all Warm the time me is pretty big overall. Yeah. It just gives you that damage advantage constantly. And so that's when he tends to run away with games. Yeah, I mean, Khan being first pick on Hype Unit side, saying we're not going to go for the Cassie and the Ash to retaliate. Furia, we've been seeing her a lot today, too, yeah. which I'm always a huge fan of. I mean, the, the Inflame's actually great. And I think with Khan, that's going to be really strong, too. And that's something, I mean, on the last death segment we were kind of talking about was the fact that, I mean, the Furia, of the wild. if you're looking at damage amp, we'll, we'll go through four people, right? Mm. Genos, right now, 15% gets banned out. 15% now on Tyra. She's just been kind of on her way out already, so we don't know. Is that yes, because of this? Is, is like, you know, where does that fall? Either or. Right. Torvald brought down to 15%. Fury is in flame. 30% still. Like, right. it's still a very significant increase when you ult. And yeah, it's an ult, so it has to be a significant Pray increase. But And it's not going to be up anywhere near as the often, but it's still cannot. so potent in fights. If you use it right, and I, I know Hype Unit will, it will win a game for you. Exactly. Barrick Maldamba being picked in response. Now, here's what's interesting. In Why game, try and opt to go die. for the Maldamba? I mean, no there's not really a lot of other characters that I could think of that aren't really, that are available now. They got rid of Genos already. So really, Maldamba, yeah. Fury are the only ones but at the same time, though, I mean, we see this resilience counter a lot, which is why he's not picked as much, right? Yeah. He's um, he's been in a in a an interesting spot. Damage Amp took such precedence over mm -hmm. everyone else that Maldamba, who's got fantastic healing, has right. a hit scan heal as well. Like he's got two forms of healing on top of him. Okay. He can stun you. He has a really good ult in his fear. A really, really good disengage in his slither. The only reason he wasn't picked was because Damage Amp was so prominent, and it was kind of easy if you stack too much CC to get rid of him. Now, if Genos is going to be banned, or if Furia maybe starts oh, yeah. taking that ban spot, he his priority just skyrockets again because he's so good as a support. All right. Well, I mean, there we go. You heard it first from Gore, and of course, both teams are locked in. Game one is on its way. Casters take us right into it. Appreciate it. Fine. Game one of maybe the closest set of our Tuesday minor league action. About to kick off Hype Unit versus Sanguine. Hype Unit, of course, winning the last matchup against Sanguine, but still close enough standings-wise. 6-0 up top for Hype Unit. And then just a couple games behind are Sanguine. So this is a big one. I mean, you're looking 12 games is the, the big number that all these minor league teams are working towards. And then whoever's on top after 12, you're going to HRX qualifiers, so these games is you're really starting to flesh out the standing. So important. Already down by two. Don't want to go down by more than that if you can, can say anything about it. So big game here. Dolson and Kresnik on the call for you. Should be a good one. This is such an important game for Sanguine because of that, too. I mean, I think if they lose this, they would have to have Hype Unit get upset by some of the other teams yes. if, they, if they want to have a chance, at least in the head-to-head. -head. So huge game for them. And... They're going to start off with a pretty interesting actually start. Hype Unit's really stacked up on this on this tree and pit side, and they're giving up this apartment control to Sanguine, and yeah. I'm not sure exactly why it might be. Poison's down with a free fire, but looks like they might actually have Tay moving around to pressure him out, but just a little bit. They're going to kite back, and we're still kind of a stalemate here. He's drawing the attention of the Khan, pulling off any of that attention from the uh, from the midpoint, and instead forcing Tay to move his way left through these apartments. Lots of mid-focus to start off from... Uh, Sanguine right now, just kind of letting Tay do his thing, poke out a little bit, realizing that a lot of his attention is split. So why change up too much? Paying on the Eevee. Gonna be a great look at that champion. And we, we noted 75% win rate for Lex, which is, which is massive. 9% pick rate, 75% win rate. So they're hoping for Sanguine that this is in that 75% category. No first blood just yet. 70% for Sanguine, 60% for Hype Unit, just a tug of war happening. Some poke damage here, I'm gonna back off. Some poke damage there, you're gonna back off. But now with 96% from Sanguine, the fight's gotta break out if Hype Unit want to try to avoid them taking the first one. Payne gets a nice shot onto Poison, so there's a little DPS mitigated. He's one of the best to do it on the EV. Tay as well finds his time to aggress. Hype Unit take over the fight, just a little bit too aggressive all at once, and Sanguine 
Drop point number one. These long fights go so sided towards whatever team has the Furia, because Inflame just charges yep. so fast. And having that potential to just either pressure with the Inflame or just completely counter an aggressive push. If Sanguine had found an opportunity and then walks head first into 30% more damage, it could have immediately fallen apart. And although this time Hype Unit kind of put their foot to the gas and, and applied that pressure with it, it really does show that those long, slow fights, that's really what they're playing for with that Furia. Pain blinking and getting just a little bit of damage here, but it looks like Neo might be the first to go down, but Sang will get the trade on to Tay. That's pretty solid. Dread Serpent connects on a couple members of Hype Unit. It's a one-for-one -one trade as Edgem looks to find some damage. Good record target there. Barak rolling himself forward. Edgem as well. The the Edgem kind of pay and DPS combo for Hype Unit has worked out so well for them. Good stun. And good follow-up damage from Edgem to get the kill as well. Slide forward, get get some auto aim, get a double baller. Steve with the stun, return some damage onto Edgem, but these uh, these effective trades up until this point really have kept this payload engine closer. Good double kill from Payan to keep things moving. Yeah, Steve just goes in to die on the point. Kind of have to at this point. You really just need to stall it as much as you can so it give your tanks more time to respawn and get set up in a comfortable position. Sanguine have a few ultimates online. They have Dome Shield as their dominance if they want to use them to buy some time right now. Hype unit though. I think they're going to play smart enough and hide away and try to force it. Actually, sure. Stigma gets a little bit forward and a little bit split, barely manages to get away, but they have to spend the Dome Shield to save him. That's a great Ice Storm onto Poison, preventing any sort of movement out of there. First Blood, no more Lex. Now the Inflame as well. That's going to get some good aggression. Sir Dominance clips a little bit of it right onto the point there. Neo stunned out. Edgeman Tay, though, they're just going to ignore the Ash fight on the backside. Get Vayne and Stigma. Now the Overpower onto Neo, completely swept out here. Sanguine. Hype unit now knocking on the doorstep, and you're going to have to drop down to contest. Five seconds left. I'm not sure they're going to be able to get in range, especially not with the commander's grab. Edgem finding the kill. Hype unit, very, very slow play, but find the time to hit that gas pedal and get themselves their second point. Yeah, that was a that was great play by them. And honestly, Sanguine spent both of the tank ultimates trying to hold that, and that makes this so much harder for them going into this next fight. Yes, hype unit had to spend a few ults to turn it after that, but that's so much just fight elongating resources that yeah. Sanguine just don't have anymore. Hype Unit will have the uh, the enlightenment here, but that's seconds. that's only one like one v one thing. So ultimates are basically even. Sure. Sanguine could win off of an execution with the Dread Serpent, but it's going to be hard to find a target I think with with how far back Hype Unit was playing. Five. Yeah, big ultimates missing for both Three, teams here. Two, only a couple one. kills for Sanguine, and look at that early resilience for every single player on Hype Unit's side. Dread Serpent, assert dominance notably, a little bit of knockback from Stigma as well, but those are two big ultimates that uh, lose a lot of value. Early chunk damage, wow, Pan finds the angle onto Stigma, gets the kill, there's your Dread Serpent. Not enough resilience to make it completely ignorable, but definitely clipped off just a little bit. Pan in a beautiful spot here, shoulder bash, a little bit of damage reduction, gets Neo out safely, but not for long as Pan finds the blink, another kill, two for him so far in this second round. And Hype Unit, just on the back of those two kills, are, are looking at point number three. Yeah, and they put the Ice Storm in the way of touching the point two, so they might not have a chance to even touch with that slow field, and they can't. 3-0 for, for Hype Unit on the back of some great play by Edge and Payne, just teaming yeah. up perfectly to find these kills. It's looking great for Hype Unit right now. It's been too calculated, too fast. And they still have an Inflame. They only use the Ice Storm, notably. Elected, we don't need to pull the trigger on the Enlightenment. Seismic Crash wasn't quite ready in Flame. And Sanguine, they used their Dread Serpent, didn't have Dome Shield ready to go. It's her dominance still on cooldown. So, you know, even despite winning the mid pretty handily, they did it without using too much. So Hype Unit are in a great spot to maybe keep this payload moving forward. Kill from Stigma, maybe help Stolfing out, but there's the Inflame to get Hype Unit moving. Yeah, and they find, I've been to find two picks early, Pain and T Mac. Neo will most likely go down here in the tree. Great block by Pain, actually, in the last second. Edge uses nice. the Enlightenment to try to keep himself alive, but no kill means he doesn't get the reset, but he's going to get plenty of charge just walking straight through this team. And that was great by them. They only basically use, they only used Inflame and Enlightenment. They have Overpower and Seismic Crash mm -hmm. to try to turn this. Even if they get the Assert Dominance, Hype Unit are, are going to have the answer. Yep. Sanguine have to give it a little bit of time. They don't want to fight too far away. Want to get it, let it get just a little bit closer so that their back lines can do the maximum amount of damage. Yeah. Lex, with that little bit of fall off, you want to definitely play where he's going to be the most effective. It's got to be an Assert Dominance that locks up a couple because you might not find too much. Seismic Crash does stun some. Tay as well. First kill onto Poison. The Lex has had a tough go of things this game. Dome Shield drops down. 
That's going to stall things out a little bit. Moving forward, Assert Dominance could be in range here. Overpower held on to by Hype and down comes the flag. Overpower does not connect onto Neo. Commander's grab is going to get him out of range, but Shoulder Bash, the gravity, drops him right back down into flag range. Neo has saved his life so, so long here, but he might not live much longer. Good Dread Serpent actually does end up healing off for the Ash. Sanguine low health bars, but it looks like Hype Unit are the ones who have to peel back. I honestly think they could have ignored Neo there and just looked forward. He was he had to go so far to make that Assert Dominance work. Yeah. They could have just played around him on the other side, burnt down the rest of the targets, and great play by Steve. Manages to keep Neo alive in the end. Really aggressive zone and edge might end up going down, and Lightning gets forced out, poison so shot. low. Yep. And, even after that pressure, Hype units still end up on the better end of things. Yeah, and then now they're getting aggressive. Paying one more shot on the Stigma after the Ice Block. Stigma a little faster on the trigger. He shot first. Edgem's able to answer back. Hype unit now starting to push down Main Street. Dome Shield drops out. Soda's in flame here. Around the back goes Tay. Battle Shout's going to give him enough healing to stay alive. Healing Beam rips through from the Fury. Nothing on the back end of the Inflame. That's pretty notable to look at. That's normally where they try to push that advantage. Stigma, though, very low. One peak from this Cassie could spell the difference between a defense and a successful push. The Droner, a little far forward with no help on the back side. That's a kill for Neo. As overtime begins. Wow, that overtime meter is evaporating. Edgeman T Mac, though, staying alive. That's pretty important here. Dread Serpent. Onto nobody on the back line. Overpower as well. The rocket boots are going to get him right back into range, and overtime continues. There's no reason not to just spend ultimates here, because no matter what happens, uh, Hype Unit is still going to get a conversion or not lose, no matter what. More kills coming in for Hype, and this Ice Storm to turn it as well. Great decisions by them, even with that overpower not really connecting. They're still throwing everybody off the point. Neo's going to die on this contest. Yeah, he's got the Shoulder Bash to save his life, but it's not going to be enough. And what a fight from Hype Unit to round out that game. Uh, at the very beginning of that, it, it looked for sure like Sanguine were going to be able to defend. And then, you know, Dread Serpent on the backside. Maybe you're assuming Payne blinks it. I mean, maybe there's some peel going on on the back end, but didn't really connect. The overpower towards the end of the game did, though. And that was a very long, drawn-out fight. We, we saw almost two rounds of some of those ultimates uh, towards the end of that game. Yeah, I mean, Neo had a second to assert dominance. Bought them some time at the end, but yep. again, that Dread Serpent either had to be a communication thing yeah. by Steve. Someone must have said, they're rushing through Hut, they're rushing through sure. Hut, and he just panicked, panic feared there. They weren't. They were not. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the next chapter, they were not. They were not, no. It, it didn't end up paying off for them. I don't know how much it would have helped, that last point. They, yeah. had, they were getting resilience on, on Hype Unit's side. Maybe could have gotten a, a one pick, but by the rate it was going, the picks that were going to Hype Unit, it, was, it wouldn't have done enough to turn the fight. Well, the 75% win rate Lex Takes a little knock on that stat. Poison did 60,000 damage, which is solid in this case, but Edgem much more consistent at 88,000. T Mac at 134, doing pretty well as well. Tay, though, on that frontliner, I give him a shout at 5 1 and 17 on the con. 20 streak throughout that game. The frontline control cannot be understated. Yeah, I mean, Tay was doing so much on the side. Even that beginning where they were kind of both playing really tentative, Tay was still able to go in and yeah. get aggressive and then get out and still be there for when they went in for that inflame push. And the other person that was waiting to pounce over there was Payton, mm -hmm. sitting on that rooftop, perfectly waiting to jump onto any target that got overextended. Double-digit kills, double-digit assists, single-digit deaths, and that's all you can hope for in your mobility, and that's paying this time around. Hitting those shots and, and confirming a lot of kills, peeling a lot of fights back in favor. Hype unit were very rarely on the back foot at all throughout this game. A lot of that's thanks to Payne finding these confirms. Big double kill there and helps seal up the game. Yeah, I was just, I love the, uh, the flexibility on this map for Eevee of being able to blink through those windows mm -hmm. or even just fly over the rooftops. There's right. so much mobility for her that you don't really get afforded with any other character on Bright Marsh. Uh, Lex. Tough game there, yeah. just didn't have the, the room to play. Yeah, it was really tough with Payne. Like, normally you would want to see him kind of trading into the EV as much as possible. Two shots could take her down if one's a headshot, but Payne was just not taking those fights. Only yeah. took them when he was already low. Let Tay do most of the legwork and just sure. got the stats on the slash line at the end for it. And that's what matters, right? KDA yes, at the end of the day. KDA and a win all for Hype Unit. Striking first in this one versus two matchup. Game number two right after this. Steel Series, the official peripheral provider of the Paladins Minor League.
Welcome back, guys. If you guys were expecting a long set, well, Hype Unit is certainly disappointed. Those who were expecting a long set, but also those who just wanted to see a quick game as well. 1-0 already, a 4-0. Yeah. Quick game from Hype Unit, 12-2 and for Edge of My Believe, and a bunch of positive slash lines overall throughout this entire game. I mean... They, they just cleaned it up. Yeah, I mean, exactly what you were saying. 12-2 and two for Edgem, 13-2. and two, I think 13-19 to 19 there for yeah. Payan as well. Like, they just they knocked it out of the park. They blew everyone else out of the water. And when you, when you look at the other side, Stigma, Poison, they weren't able to hit it. The Lex didn't quite land on its feet, I think, the mm. way they expected it to. So while they had kind of, I think, like the threads to follow, this was just Hype Unit playing better at the yeah. end of the day. But it is kind of to be expected. I mean, they, you know, wanted Bright Marsh. They played on Bright Marsh. They win Bright Marsh. If they can do it a second time, kind of on Sanguine's map pick, mm -hmm. then it starts to look like a 3 0. Right, exactly. I mean, they cleaned it up pretty quickly in this case, did an extremely good job. However, we're going to see where we are heading for map two currently. And it's Warder's Gate. Interesting. Now, I, I, I like seeing this map every now and again because we don't see it as often. Yeah, it's definitely a step outside the ordinary. There's definitely a couple, uh, like, you know, PPL teams right. that really like it. Kanga have always had this, like, affinity for Warder's Gate. Mm -hmm. And it seems like Sanguine are feeling maybe the same way about it. And, well, with some of the changes, again, coming into this update, I don't expect to see much different on this map, but range is always good but you don't want to sniper right leon sure. cassie have been very very good on this map along with evie and mave in the right hands so i wouldn't be surprised to see potentially some of the same champions that did well last game do well here right however the band's certainly being shaken up just a little bit i mean genos is oh, the wow. same as before but sanguine opts to get rid of the con they hype unit gets rid of cassie Holy and Christ ash in response you. to that they get makoa but atlas is still open atlas, so is willow actually yeah. You could potentially grab Atlas Willow here if you really want to. This is a better map for her mm -hmm. than Bright Marsh. Um, I say that out loud, and I take that back immediately. Yeah, That's not really think, true. Yeah, it's not a better map for Willow, but it's <laughs> definitely another Let's map for Willow. Mm -hmm. In my mind, I was thinking, I can't even remember what map it was that the last set closed on, where it was like the only map where I was like, That's maybe not the best mm. one. Frozen Guard. Frozen Guard, yeah. Frozen, Frozen Guard, Guard is one, yeah. not a Willow map to me. And for some reason, wow. Warder's Gate and Frozen Guard were the same. But this this is going to be a very, very solid map here. Willow Atlas, I mean, you're going to have a little bit of potency against her with the Leon, but she's going to be perfectly fine up in the sky. Right, exactly. Leon Barrick being up. opted to be the response for Sanguine Esports in this case. They take it, uh, they take it um, fourth and fifth pick in this case. I mean, this is interesting, of course. I mean, like, you have Doesn't the Willow, you have me. the Atlas, and Back the Maeve is being picked as well. Now, here's what's interesting is that Maeve can do a lot of damage. She can definitely pop off in certain ways. She has her mobility. She has her, obviously, her execution oh, damage that can sneak up on you a lot, especially with Furia. Wowzers. But why? This is already looking like a good comp. Yeah, This that's, is already looking powerful. Man. That is a winning composition. Like, if yeah. I, like... It's very rare that I can look at a Makoa Leon Barrick, even even with Maldama on there. Like that's it's a very good lineup yeah. from Sanguine, but I'm imagining Tay on Atlas, Payan on Willow. Yeah. I mean just that alone already should kind of scare you. You add in the damage jam from a Fury, you throw a Maze mobility in there. This Eevee, this Leon are going to have their work cut out for them. And yeah. so you're going to have to go from, you know, Poison and, uh, and Stigma having the game they did last game. They have to you turn that completely on its head yeah. or else this might already be out of their hands. Already a Nars being the last pick. You, I mean, you put it perfectly. I think so too. This is already an extremely good composition that seems to be coming out for a hype unit in this case. This is game two, and we're going to see what these teams have in store for us. If hype unit can really clutch this one out. Let's get it right down to our casters. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Game two awaits in the wings. Get another look at Warder's Gate today. I'm always excited to see a little variety, a little spice in the map pool. And good draft there from Hype Unit, as they noted on the desk. And interesting, you're basically making Sanguine choose. All right, do you want Makoa, Atlas, or Willow? And then we're going to take the other two. So I think that's brilliant, honestly, for throughout the first three. They set themselves up well. Now they got to capitalize. They got the draft, but can they win the game yet again? Betters would say yes. There's so much just potential to get aggressive on the composition. Yeah, Nara won't be going too fast, but.
Temporal Divide, big go button for the whole team. You have Inflame, you have Midnight. Willow can flutter basically from, from space, from Earth to the moon, more right. or less, with how much and distance so you get from that. So begin. a lot of potential there from them. But Sanguine, they, Makoa is one of the better champions at kind of peeling away that aggression. He's not great himself when he gets pushed out, but hitting a hook on an aggressive target will be right. really powerful. And also, they're actually waiting for this aggression from Makoa instead. You can see Maeve waiting on Mount. They must know this is coming, but they're just not ready for it. Neo melee range hook going in with poison. Oh, Great follow up by kill. him, but Pain barely survives. Wow, they didn't find the kill. The bet was there, did not pay off. They lose two on the opposite side. Andy Shell spins, doesn't connect on the levitation. Death at his own, at his, at his own hand for Neo. Poison pulls one back. Unfortunate start there for Hype, or for Sanguine. They find a good flank, doesn't pay off, and he shell spins off the map. We've seen Neo fall off the map so much in PFL. Yeah, poor guy. It's really happened like, it's happened like four times on camera. It, it, it happens to everybody, but how many times is it going to happen to Neo on camera? I think that's... As long as we're watching, it'll be happening. <laughs> You're not wrong. And Sanguine now resettling back. Yep. And actually, Tay kind of messes himself up there, setbacking Neo right when he gets hooked, but manages to survive with his own second yeah. chance. And <laughs> Sanguin have okay, capture here, but they're getting surrounded completely. Look at this collapse by Hyphen. Yep. to throw in and find Steve to start. Poison has to soar his way out, get second or setback right down into the ice block, so he's going to stay alive. Edge him. Some good shots from Stigma prevent that, but here's your Faith Light. Enlightenment connects, but Tay does as well. Payne in a great spot once that soar wears out. Payne drops down. Double kill from the Atlas on the front line. Payne might just seal this. All the way up for Hype Unit, and they strike first. What a great setback by Tay there. I mean, you gotta remember, yeah. he's not running Deja Vu. Mm -hmm. That was a direct hit. There's no other option, and Neo jumping into the pit because he knows he's gonna be staggered otherwise. That There's one an doesn't asterisk count. on that. Yeah, that There's one doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> not for what I was laughing about before. That was just a, a genuine trying not to be staggered death there for right. Neo. And Hype Unit now setting up a pretty decent surround. Edge able to use that three peak on the horse to just, just keep things spotted up top, know that Neo might be trying to come in and has to back off just a little bit. Okay. I'm, the, looking down. I'm so scared now for the rest of this game. Anytime anyone's near an edge, I'm going to be, my heart's going to start pounding. Apparently it's a, uh, it's a map where it's always high potential for dropping off the side edge and avoids that. Neo's one for one on purpose versus accidental. Payload does inch closer here. First choke point is reached. Lots of attention being paid to this Mave on the right-hand side, but here's your Inflame. The aggression follows up as well as the Dome Shield right there on the point. Poison is gonna try to duel with the flank, realizes that's not a battle he wants to fight. Inflame wears out, no kills for Hype Unit, instead just a very low health Dethroner that Poison's gonna look to try to take advantage of. Enough healing keeps him alive, and the Seismic Crash should try to turn it around. Notably, the Dome Shield used as well. Here comes the Midnight. Maybe they're able to find something, but a Shell Shield keeps the two of them safe, and Hedgem has just not been able to find his way in on this backside. As long as he's controlling it, I think it's fine. Exile, potentially used for Hype Unit trying to find something, and Faith Flight, so they're using basically ultimate everything, nice ultimate-wise, and seeing what sticks, and looks like this might be it. Two picks found for them early in the fight. Yeah, and they're forced to use their way, their, their sword to get them out. Rocket Boots as well, lack of mobility, not quite there. You might have the blink, a double kill from Payan. Left some seedlings on the ground, and I think Vayne ran over for the double kill. Hype unit now, six straight points. Put themselves up 2-0 on Water's Gate. Really is a terrifying draft for them. I mean, only Edge and T-Mac have died. Tay, Payne, and Dethrone are still undying, both tanks. And one of the premier DPSs, I think, just yeah. in the game right now in general, Payne has been playing really well, barely surviving that pressure from Neo earlier in the game. Maybe if he had, I noticed Neo um, hooked immediately. Mm -hmm. Maybe if he had done the shot hook cancel, he would have had the DPS to take down Pain. But I mean, either way, he got healed for by T Mac at the last second. And they also used Ancient Rage and Dread Serpent on that defense. So only yeah. Ice Storm up for Sanguine for this mid fight. They're going to have to find a, a great execute on it. Maybe catch Pain or Edge that can't use the damage reduction on their mobility. Yeah. Or they're just going to, I think, fall apart and crumble on this mid. You already have Morale Boost 2 for the Inflame. It's ready now, it'll be ready towards the end of the mid. I don't know if I've ever seen that I've before. I've never seen that before. That's brilliant. He didn't end up staying up there, but uh, good mobility from the horse. <laughs> if nothing else, that uh, horse is now one of the most mobile characters in this game. Payne wraps around. Bit of a do -si do Both teams trading sides. Ball or Steve was the first one to go down. Here's your inflame yet again. Edge him with the double kill already. Poison's trying to find a way to pull this one back, but he's going to need some serious DPS in order to do it. Three kills for Edge him on this re-engage. 
Now adding a fourth, Payen, or it was a delayed three. Payen as well gets himself on the board. Sanguin were able to fight from the point a little bit. He got 66% to, to kind of hold on to, but Hype Unit on the back of only an Inflame. Now you have the Midnight up. Faith Flight will be ready soon as well. There's actually great play by Team Mac on that mid in general, keeping the Throner alive way longer than he should have. There was a great, basically, cross map beam to stun the person chasing the Inara, so great for him to keep him alive. And Stigma, you gotta hit those, gotta get that little yeah. bit of cross map pressure. Enlightenment, Enlightenment. to cleanse the Midnight, yeah. specifically, I think, to make that happen. And that's gonna help him a lot here, but not if he goes down immediately to Edge. Yeah, you got immediately poked down, so yeah, you can see, but you can't fight. Edgem hits the last few shots to Throner as well. A double kill for the Inara. Ice Storm onto Edgem, but that's not going to be enough to save Sanguine. Another mid fight goes to Hype Unit, and now seven straight points for them. That is crazy by Hype Unit. They're just firing at all cylinders right now. Definitely, I think, showing the potential that I don't think was really actualized at the start of this season. Yeah. Everyone sees the Hype Unit roster, they're like, oh, well, we'll see them at land. You know, but those first couple of weeks were so contested, so back and forth. But this Hype Unit is scary. Yeah. Not only are they playing well, but they're drafting well, too. I would not want to be on the receiving end of those five champions. Absolutely not. And that that's where you got to look. Not only... You have to try to beat Hype Unit in the game. You got to try not to lose right off the bat in draft because you give them an inch, they'll take every bit of that and then some. As the payload moves forward to what could be the end game push. Exiles ready to go and Flame soon to be as well as the Seismic Crash. Only the Dome Shield immediately ready for Sanguine. So these are tense moments. You want to avoid going down 2-0. That's a big pick. Edgem electing to fight on the same side does not stay alive quite as long as last time. As Neo finds the kill. It's a good wall. Seismic Crash just to try to seal up a couple. That's a double stun. Are you able to follow up on it? The Dome Shield drops out, forces them back. Neo with his second kill on this defense. Good thought from Hype Unit. But Sanguine just a little bit better there. And this is the first, maybe of the game, that they've convincingly won. Yeah, all of the back of that Dome Shield from Vayne, I think, bought a lot of room there. And Neo might actually go down, getting a little bit overzealous here so low. Does barely make it Makes way. no mistake that time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot more careful, definitely, about the timing of his shell spin. And that was a little bit on the back of Edge, I think, being a little bit too forward. What a setback, actually, pulling Stigma back in. See ya. And Stun is going to give this a lot of open room now for yep. Hype. They're going to, uh, Sanguine's going to back way up. And yeah, you need to. Yeah, they're just holding, they're just going to be holding main as long as they can. But you can already see the pressure coming in from this side. Edge is going to keep fighting on that right side. But mm -hmm. you can see he's much more careful now, staying very far out of Neo's hook range. If you can dodge those hooks, you can definitely poke out. They're going to send poison over there as well. Here's your Faith Light. Here's your Midnight. Hype Unit are going to look to get aggressive now. Drop some seedlings. Drop off poison. Main is trying to duel out with the, uh, the Fury on the back side of this fight, but he is not able to find any kills just yet. Neo maybe can just poke out one more. He does get the kill, but he trades out with Edgem. And now Vayne, the last point tank alive for Sanguine, way too low. Stigma back on the respawn from long range downtown, able to plug away a few shots, but the front lines are still alive for Hype Unit. The front liners are still finding the kills. A triple from the Atlas seals up eight straight points now and game number two for Hype Unit. So much pick potential, I think, across the board for Hype Unit. It was really tough for Sanguine to just not die. They just wanted Don't to- Don't die. Yeah, I mean, it's it's more of like a not die in a, in a random situation, right. right? In a fight, yeah, of course, there's gonna be picks back and forth. You're never gonna 5-0 every single fight. But when you're backing up, when you're retreating, trying to set back up, and one of you gets set back. Hype Unit might 5-0 every single fight. Maybe. Didn't, I mean, they were, they were like 5 twoing most of these yeah. fights. I mean, there were, there were the, you know, three trades. Frontline lifespan was much longer there at the end. And I mean, when you're fighting against an Atlas as well as Dethroner, and you're just, you know, maybe Stigma or Poison try to get in there and contest, just not going to go well. 20 streak for Payne on the Willow. This one, we maybe look at it almost lost in drafts. I mean, it wasn't a, a bad draft from Sanguine. No. It was just a very good draft from Hype Unit. Yeah, for sure. And also, the, the, the way they played together, I think, was really tough for Sanguine to deal with as yep. well. There was a moment uh, during the very last push where Payne faith lighted and was spamming at Poison. Poison went to the ice block. As soon as Poison was in that ice block, Edge prowled in from around the corner and just waited, just stared yep. at him, point blank. It was like, yeah, we were just waiting for this. Now <laughs> you're going to go down just because of how together we are. Got to say, though, across the tanks, we mentioned how, how hard they were to kill. Tay put on so yeah. much pressure. It, it's nuts. And, and this is where you consider who you not only let through, whether it's McCoy or Atlas, but who is going to be playing them. You look at Phoenix and our, our PPL, that's an extra level of concern you have to put into it, letting Phoenix of all people play something like an Atlas. And, and you know, Tay here in the minor league, that's the conversation you need to have around him as well. Very, very controlling, very aggressive. He makes good on it. 
I'm saying half an asterisk on that one for Neo, but uh, great game nonetheless from Tay. Sealed things up with a nice triple kill at the end. Yeah, I mean, you have to you have to be wary, you said, of letting these players get on out. Listen, I mean, the, I think that one of the biggest conversations for, like, what NA player deserves to be in the PPL the most between Season 1 and Season 2, Tay was, like, the one He's in that, conversation. that kept getting brought up, for sure, Absolutely. as, like, the biggest, as the best off-tank potentially to move sure. into it. And still in the PML, but still proving that he deserves to be in that conversation. Characters like Atlas are not easy, and he's showing that he can be influential on those really powerful tanks. Right, I mean, you, you look at Dethroner and Pan, who literally most recently were in the PPL, yeah. still playing around that caliber. You know, the other three guys on Hype Unit are, are, are absolutely in that conversation, mm -hmm. and they're looking pretty much unbeatable right now. 4-0, following up a 4-0, now just one game away from taking the set over the number two seed, Sanguine. We'll find out if they can do it in just a moment. Paladins Minor League is brought to you by Evil Mojo Games, developers of Paladins. Another quick game in the absolute blink of an eye. Another 4-0 making this a, not only a two wins in a row, but an 8-0 technically in this case for a hype unit. They did extremely well on Warder's Gay, and I feel like we're going to continue seeing this reign of terror. Yeah, and I mean, at this rate, they they are, like you said, kind of running this show there yep. on a reign of terror. I mean, 8-4 for Edrum. That slash line on its own doesn't mean too much, right? right. It's like, okay, yeah, he had, he had a pretty good game. Mm. Then you go to the two, like the power picks, the first right. two they grabbed, the Willow and the Atlas. You get Pan going 7-1. and one. And then you get Tay batting a 12-1 yeah. KD at the end of this game. Like, it's just done for. And it yep. was, you know, kind of noted, as, as we had said it, going into that draft. If you give these to these champions, you're just going to have a bad time. That's just yep. how it falls down. I mean, yeah, and a bad time they had indeed. I mean, Really, it's this is why you typically not only don't let just give them Atlas and Willow, but this is why you don't normally just let them through because yeah. they're such power picks and it's so hard to be able to counter them, even with the Leon like they had. However, we're going to see where we're going for it. Game three, that is, let's see, Ice Mines. Okay, interesting. Now, this feels much more old school in terms of the way of the set, just mm -hmm. where it's just... We got 4-0'd, then we got 4-0'd, and mm. now we're going to go to Ice Mines because at least that slows the game down. Right. It's very difficult to get a 4-0 on Ice Mines, but lately teams have been figuring it out a lot more. So about a year ago, a year and a half ago, this would have been like the, okay, well, we're going here. Mm. If Hype Unit win, they seal the deal, but it's going to take them to a 4-3. And if Sanguine win, it would be a 4-3. Nowadays, you could see a 4-1, you could see a 4-2, but 4-0s are not uncommon either. And if one team just gets that little one, like that one pick that just gives them the edge, it could be over. Exactly. I mean, we see here the four bands are already down there. Khan, Furia, Makoa, Atlas, these four characters, the four champions, no longer in the game. Same going off to take Willow first, which, I mean, that's going to be really good, especially on Ice Mine with those close quarters. Dead Zone's going to play yeah. a very huge role. And she just... This is one of the maps that she was kind of controlling. Like, there's two maps where I've seen where, where Mi Tom? Willow has entered the meta. About a year ago, a little over a year ago now, she entered and it was Stone Keep slash Bright Marsh. Like, those two kind of were the entryway. Come on. Ice Mines fight. feels like the entry entryway this, this time around. When she started kind of creeping back in, Ice Mines was where I first saw her. And now she's kind of rolling true pretty much anywhere and everywhere she goes. But against the Drogos, very, very good because she controls way more of the zone than he does. He has kind of very specific play areas. She can move around. And without anyone to really hard counter her, maybe control just her, 
She can run rampant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, exactly. You are not welcome They've locked here. in Willow. They've locked in Barrick and Nara for their fourth and fifth pick. Of course, they opt to go for the double front lines in this case, which pretty much limits hype unit to who they decide they're going to pick. They do go Drogos, Ash, and in this case, I mean, they're trying Time to think about to who else they were going to go for. I do like the Ying. Ying's going to provide a lot of sustainability. Now, the only thing I'm on the fence about, and mm -hmm. the only reason I would change anything here for hype unit, I like Ying, and I think she's very, very solid on this map. Genos is still available, and it kind of depends on what kind of composition they want to go. If you want to go a triple DPS, that's, I mean, well, actually, I think both of these teams, maybe it's out of the question. Ash can't quite hold her own against an Arbaric. I think she's going to have a lot of trouble, so you maybe want to lock in a Fernando at the very end there. We've seen to throw her do really well with it and with a couple of buffs, buffs in this update. Should look pretty good, but not having Genos come through after being banned a lot today was just, it's always curious to me. Yeah. I can completely understand He's, like, that super field. important, right, except yeah. for when he's not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's super important until you actually let him through, and then nobody seems to care yeah. anyway. It just doesn't end up picking him. But in this case, Strix being locked in last on saying what side. They have a little bit of a sniper battle. I mean, once again, it's going to be a little bit harder than what Ian and Krasnick were talking about on cast, but... I digress. Terminus. Now, that's interesting. I mean, we've seen it. I mean, Zerini did really, really well with it. I guess, yeah. I guess this is just a popular thing now on Ice Mines. I mean, we've seen Zerini do really well with it. We've seen it work well on console. We've seen it yeah, work well true. in the minor league in the past as well. And, I mean, I, I'm going to roll this back again a long time ago mm -hmm. and the way, way before times. We, uh, <laughs> you know, that Nara versus Terminus was not uncommon. Those mm -hmm. were, like, the matchups to go against each other. So he fits in. We'll just have to see if, presumably, Dethroner can kind of hit that level of play. Yeah, I mean, we'll definitely have to see if Hype Unit can actually manage to close this one out. This is it. Game three, a potential 3-0 sweep for Hype Unit. Casters, what do you guys think? I think Hype Unit are looking real, real good right now. Sanguine can't count them out. I think that they have the players on their team that could could see them back into this set. But the way Hype Unit are playing, you copy and paste last game into this game. Granted, different champions, but same play style. I think you got yourselves a 3 up. You know, I got to say, I love the juice in this draft. Yeah. I really, I was yeah, saying yeah. it before as we were going in, but. You can see the storylines unfold. Yeah, for real. Like, they ban Furia because Hype Unit's been doing so well with Furia. Mm -hmm. And then they take a Nar Barrack really early, which is kind of like their way of saying, hey, listen, Dethurna, we don't think you can play anything else. So we're just going to take it from you, even right. if it's not ideal. Immediate response, Hype Unit take Kinesa. They're like, well, Stigma, I know you want to play Kinesa, so we're just going to get that out of your hands. Hype Unit, they end up with T-Mac on Ying, which is good on this map. Yeah. Hits can dismount through the gate. Very powerful. Probably see T-Mac get off now to spam through. Hard to tell exactly, but no dismounts found for them, so maybe not that much value. Looks like maybe they got Strix, but going to see a sniper duel on Ice Mines, which is not something we normally no. get to see. Hey, listen, I, I love Frog Isle because of the sniper duel potential, so anywhere I can see it, I'm A-OK -okay with that. That's two for, for paying already. Combustible paying off in dividends, and now the last three members of Sanguine are not where they want to be. Edgem makes good on a little bit of range, a little bit of sight line. Tay does the same. The Throner says, okay, I can play something else. It's going to be the Terminus. And it's, he's putting on a lot of pressure with it, too. You can see this Neo going to get staggered out here last second. And actually, Vayne tried to go in to save him. Does barely make it away, but look at all the cooldowns he just used that won't be able to let him go back in and touch the point. Yeah, this one's certainly over. Yeah, for sure. Dethroner already in a good position to body block if he has to. And just because I'm a... Oh, never mind. I'll ask for it later. I was going to ask for the loadout, but can't look at it now. Sanguine now going to have to settle in and lock them out in this choke. With the point tank down yeah. for Hype Unit, going to be a little bit easier. But I feel like Hype have so many ways to just break through with either combustible or or uh, just charging him from the ash. And okay, he's using he's using the good build. This is this is I think a really standard going to become the standard for Terminus. I think moving forward, all about using yeah, your siphon <laughs> to get charges to get more siphon, and it just kind of chains into right. itself, constantly allowing you to sustain while putting on pressure. If you hit all four blasts with decimation, you're doing 1750 damage every single time. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. It's That's a pretty lot nuts. of damage. That is a, a good a chunk tank. of damage if you're rotating those cooldowns properly. He's looking to uh, to open up these front lines a little bit, get this payload engine forward. Sanguine's actually backing off, giving up a little bit of ground, realizing that this isn't necessarily right where we need to die. We can move back a little bit. Faith Light's going to stall it out. Nothing else. T-Mac using a good jump around there. Dethroner left alone by his team is going to be first blood. That spells two now for the Barrack, and a good start on the defense from Sanguine. He was actually playing behind that whole time. I think. Yeah. He was just back them distracting, and once they walked in with the Faith Flight, he was able to walk in and find what could be three kills here after this body block onto Tay, potentially, but it looks like they're going to stagger him out just a little bit longer. 
And actually, the Sir Thomas no. gets used you to let his team get me. back in time, just denying the KDs that he has to get away now, though. The Sir Thomas is about to run out, and he does go down, ends up wasting the ult just to distract them more, but they do get Vayne out of it. His, his team is back. If nothing else, his team were able to respawn and get back into the fight. One for one trade. As you noted, Van or Vayne. Payin' and Payin' and Vayne, right. Uh, Payin' now falls off as well. Neo's had a great roundabout here on the defense. Six streak for the Barrack. And uh, that's important. The front lines for hyping it throughout this set have just kind of been able to do what they want. So it's good to see uh, Neo now on the Barrack rampaging, as a matter of fact, on the Barrack. And with 30 seconds left, they're pushing into the hype unit base to try to capture their first point of this set. Yeah, and I, they're going to try to just get that defense point. I think it's too far forward maybe now for Hype Unit to be able to retouch the objective. Neo might end up going down here, but good heals from Steve and Peel from Vayne should keep him alive even through that combustible chip. But Edge gets the better of Stigma, and Hype Unit are going to be barreling forward, but I don't think they have the mobility to touch the objective. Yeah, does not quite look like it. I don't think Terminus has the move speed to make it forward there. There you go, Sanguine. First point in the set. It's Hype Unit had won the previous nine. Now up to this point, big combustible shot there from Payne seals up the double kill. This is where Sanguine just try to regroup with one another, uh, but the collapse from Hype Unit was equal to that, and you know, greater numbers win the fight today. Yeah, for sure, and also uh, Terms Vertical Mobility kind of being used there too, letting him go up yeah. into the window to flank them. And you mentioned this is Sanguine's first point in the set, and that's true, but you really, you really hate to see it. You hate to see that our first point in the set is a defense on ice mines. Yeah. The, the pretty, one of the freest points you could possibly be given. Uh, Four, my biggest thing three, I could say moving two, into this is I think one. the Throner has to be a lot more careful about his blasts. Mm -hmm. You have to hit them. Otherwise, right. you're not going to get the Well, value. you mentioned how much damage they can do. Right. N not so just important. because of the damage, because it gives him more siphon. Right. Terminus is basically a timer. Your, your timer is from that bar is full to empty. That's how much tanking you can do. Yeah. If you hit more blasts, you get more siphon. You flip the hourglass just a little bit more. That's an that's an easy equation to follow. Dethroner at 175 health, getting himself some healing as well. Could he use the reanimate? Looks like he's going to here. Chunks out some damage onto Vayne. Pan with the dragon punch follows up. There's some good shots. Chops away at Neo, who was so effective in the last defense, but not going to be effective in this mid. And a great fight from Hype Unit puts him in control. Perfect positioning of that res by the Throner, too. You don't want to kill a Terminus mid Shadowfall when he has res, because there's just less options oh, yeah, you have to avoid it. He's in the air. That's why he was able to hit Vayne. Vayne couldn't wall himself off even if he wanted to. But no dismounts for, for Hype Unit is going to mean that Vayne has a chance to touch the point. Going to have to walk into the Throner. The Throner doesn't really have a way to stop him. Payne not close to any Dragon Punch, so no ultimate's coming in. Seismic Crash connects onto Throner, but he's perfectly in cover. Fate Fight now coming in for Sangum, but what can they find with yeah, it? Yeah, you need to find some value here if you're poisoned and he's being peeled off for properly. He has to kind of move off to the right. No follow-up just yet. Dome Shield aggressively in the back line for Neo, and he gets the kill on to Tay here. So it looks like Sanguine might be able to retake Neo and Poison combined for two. And Hype Unit did not have the ultimates to contest just yet. Dome Shield as well as the Faith Light Seismic Crash to top it all off. Just too much from Sanguine. Now they're in control of this mid. They have combustibles to kind of make some room, but I don't think there's any way that Hype Unit have a chance to touch. Tay, actually, if they can get him in a good angle, maybe could make it through. Combustible could open up some room. Ooh, nice. Actually knocked wow, him off the point. Wow, it split him off. That's no, uh, that was crazy. He needed two more ticks. That's a good Dread Serpent for Baller. Steve, Dethroner drops. Stigma and Vayne find those kills. Neo, as well, is going to continue his tear through this game. Maybe a Dragon Punch pulls it back. Stigma says, no way, not today. Gets the snipe. And Sanguine with their first offensive point of the set. Oh, yeah, now we can give them that there point there. Edge using Headhunter to try to slow down the push, but there's just too much health for him to burn through. Might go down to the poke, getting healed barely, and actually gets the better of Neo. Wow, 236 health left for Edgem. You know Stigma's somewhere up there. You can't quite see him, but you know he's looking at you. As the payload moves forward, Tay. Aggressive shoulder bash, gets a double stun here. Is there any follow-up from the rest of his team? There is from Payan. That gets him a kill. And this is what Ice Mines is all about, just these, these big trades force him back. If you can take an inch, it's that much harder to get back to your payload. For sure, and now they're going to try to force them back. And 
run out the clock as much as possible. Poison very low backing up here, but Fire Spit already used for Poison. They know where he is, but not exactly. And actually, Poison's now going to re-peak Payne. Gets chipped down a little bit more. That's a little some more information for Sanguine, but they get they actually get to throw in her too, so maybe they can start fighting this retake. Going to be tough with a pick on the Poison, though. Yeah, big illusory rift evens that one out for Hyping. It was a bad start, but some good healing keeps him around. Payne has been spot on with these combustibles throughout this game as well. These Fire Spits have found every bit of value that you would hope for. A hype unit looking good on the defense. Bad start there for Dethroner, but his team is able to stabilize. And uh, that's something to look at as well. Terminus notably being picked up in this game. That's kind of the meta we're in now, where you know, the, the mix of frontline bands and all that sort of fun stuff. And uh, hit or miss maybe throughout this game, but uh, not good, not bad. Yeah, for sure. I, I think as people play more Terminus, at least with the new Siphon and how the Blasts work now, we're going to see it taken a little bit more effectively. Payne goes in with the Dragon Punch and trades his life for Poisons, but the tanks of Hype Unit are so aggressive yeah. all over them. Steve getting walked at now, and Stigma and Edge were kind of trading back and forth, but it looks like Edge is going to get the better of it. <laughs> and we dropped Maybe. down my Flashbang. You can't see anything except some shots from Vayne. Now 30 seconds left. Sanguine with four ultimates ready. Payload has not moved very far. Stigma with some nice clean shots there to keep things moving. Double kill with the no scope, notably. Hey, I mean, Catch it was him on rust. Barrel stuffed, basically. Yeah, there's an asterisk. Bouncing, he was if, if we were back in the the one v one quick scope days, I would be yelling at my friend if if, uh, if that were the kill he got onto me. <laughs> Those barrel stuff does not count, but uh, it does in the game of paladins, and that's all they care about on Sanguine. Overtime will begin. Both teams with some ultimates to work with. Sanguine notably in the lead. Up 2-1 here, looking to make it 3 with a successful push. Edgem trying to play back. Not able to hit those shots. Plugs a little bit of damage away. Rocket Boots from Neo pushes him forward over time. It's going to start moving very, very quickly here. Big eyes on the frontliners for Sanguine. They have to stay alive in order to contest this payload if they step off just for a moment. Their team's not going to have a chance. One more long-range shot. Edgem forces out the plug, finds the kill onto Poison as well. Tay throws up some damage, but the shield from Neo is enough to counter that one out. You're fighting at a 5v4 disadvantage. Hype Unit looking to take advantage. They're doing just that. Frontliner's still alive, but they're forced back with no help from their DPS, and Hype Unit tie it up. Fast OT at that point against Drogos and, and uh, Knessa is just, it's just brutal. It, it's very, yeah. very difficult. And now the team wants to use ultimates because of just how important they are moving into this mid fight on Ice Pines. You really need good ultimates to make it work. We even saw they tried to go in and kind of cross that gap a little bit earlier. Try, when uh, Tay went in for that touch, mm -hmm. they would have had a chance, but got CC'd before he could land his assert dominance. And that's what lost Hype Unit that mid fight. That's kind of what gifted yeah. it to Sanguins. Edgem's had a great go of things here at 8 3 and 5. Dethroner at three, 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 seven, and seven. I mean, again, I think that the Terminus has definitely had his moments. Had some where he hasn't been quite as effective, uh, but nonetheless, big eyes on the front lines throughout this game. A little bit of master riding. That's what I wanted to see. Dethroner with one, paying down there with two. As the teams look to fight one more time on this mid, lots of blue items for Sanguine as well. Damage mitigation, some resilience, a little bit of everything for them. Hype Unit looks to get aggressive. Nice head boop off the roof. You got to aim that one properly, especially on the Stigma. He drops down. I don't know if they were able to find him into the in. stealth. Wow. Stays alive. Vayne as well gets a kill, but it's maybe just a little bit of consolation at this point. It's Hype Unit tear through the rest of this fight with a chance to zone. And they still have some important ultimates left. Dragon Punch and assert dominance are down. Sanguine with everything. That's something you have to note as well. Edgem walled off from the rest of his team, but he stays alive. Oh my, the teleporter keeps him alive. No, it was the pocket by T-Mac. T-Mac saving both of his DPS in a row. Fantastic healing by him. That ying, those ying mechanics really coming through. Dread Serpent comes in, but what does it find? Looks like maybe it just pushes Tay back a little bit. Fayfly coming in, but it should go down to the Headhunter. Edge finding the shot at the last second, but he trades with Neo. Yeah, Neo, that's an important one there. If Edgem was still alive throughout that fight, not good news for you. Dethroner has the reanimate, elects to use it right now. No damage from it or any kills. Stigma finds the plug shot over time. Starting to go down very, very quickly as Hype Unit back off, realize they have some room to play with here. They're looking to just plug out some of Sanguine. No ultimates left in this fight. Neo with the first blood onto Tay as well. Lots of frontline presence gone from Hype Unit now, all down to Dethroner, but they realize they do still have some time, 54%. So you don't need to win this fight right now. 
Thurder needs to cancel a Siphon just... I, I'm, I'm terminate picking now. I should just drop that. He needs to cancel a Siphon just a little bit earlier. He's wasting a little bit of it. Every inch of that bar of Siphon really matters. They might try to execute now with the Dragon Punch going in. I don't know what they're going to be able to find. They do get Neo. That's a huge part of it. And they get the cap time. Perfect timing by Tay. And he's getting close to assert dominance as well. Over time. You got to get a touch. You got to move just further over if you're Tay. Dethroner, though, crashes down. No more front line for Hype Unit. And Sanguine now are pushing for their chance to win game number one. Or Stigma. game three, but their game number one. Stigma moving forward right now, using this kind of close range Strix that was working before on that mid fight. Really tough for the tanks that just, if they get caught at that little bit of distance where they can't do the damage to them, that's where the Strix is just going to absolutely harass them because the shots are easy to hit at that range. You know, those, those 1200s Red. really add up quickly. The Thorn are making things easier for Edge up top, but this Dread Serpent could be an execution for Sanguine. It's a pretty decent Dread Serpent. Nothing else buys them some space. Tay says no way to that. Drops assert dominance and baller Steve, Stigma, and Vayne are all forced back. That leaves Dethroner alone with Neo and Poison and the rest of Hype Unit. That's two kills. Some good zoning there. Buys them a great start to this defense. They're going to get a little bit aggressive. Kind of sh chain shields here, more or less. Seed shield into Siphon probably as soon as uh, Dethroner sees someone peek again. Good zoning here. They just need to be aware of that left side opening up to Neo mounting in from behind. Looks like they did see him because they're backing up, but that means Neo bought that much space by just riding around on this burning tiger. Yeah, well, I would be terrified if a burning tiger too. started riding towards me as well. I don't know if it's Neo or the mount, but either way, Hype Unit backed themselves up here. Here's the Dragon Punch. Found some value. Fortunately, not the mid. Paying cancels that one out. Does not find a target. 40% return to that. Some good combustible shots. Get Neo into his rocket boots, gets the reset. Payload inching closer here. This is a big choke point that you want to hold. It's a tough map to defend on, the, obviously, the closer it gets. Some good shots from Tay. Stigma just body blocking, trying to prevent that AoE splash from getting a plug onto Baller Steve, who escapes with his life. Stigma's just back and effective. Tay is just living rent free in the back line. Unfortunately, rent is due, and it's his life. It's a one for one trade. Payload not moving just yet. And actually, great knock-in by Payan on Stigma gets the follow-up as well while Dethroner goes in to put on some more pressure. Neo going to be caught out and potentially staggered as well. Yeah, it looks like he can't really get away. Understands the limits of his rocket boots, so he ends up stuck there in the corner. And Hype unit now. They're really forward. They're going to almost for sure bring this to a 3-3. I think the most important thing here for Hype Unit, though, is Tay has to show themselves. They want that assert dominance early so they can have more options for the next mid fight. Cool. And uh, you're going to have the reanimate as well for Dethroner. We don't really ever see, you know, two, three of those a game. He's used them pretty well up to this point. Assert dominance is going to be the last ultimate to come up, but it will be ready shortly after. So big kills here from Dethroner help seal up this defense. It was very, very important for Hype Unit to do that. Now just one point away from ending the set. Yeah, and, and they have now a couple options moving into this mid, potentially. You can see the pressure from the Throner here. Terminus seems to be doing pretty well. I think he's being yeah. a little bit more conservative about when he uses his blasts. Uh, you, you should be using them often just to be getting, obviously, damage and regen, but he's going for shots that are more guaranteed to hit. Yeah. So now he's making sure that he gets the most out of that regeneration on his Siphon. Four. Effectively bottomed him. Actually, I didn't notice how, how little damage Poison was kept to yeah, on this map. I mean, Willow's banned on this map all the time, and he's being out damaged by Tay and the Inara. Yeah, not some, not a name we've really said too much throughout this game. There's re your resilience is for Hype Unit. Some Master Riding on the same members, but Sanguine picks up some this time. Vayne on 12, Baller Steve on 11. The only two in this game. There's your Assert Dominance. Flashbang ripped through Assert Dominance head. Up, down he goes. Neo gets the kill. Tay with the assist, and again, he's just going to zone out Stigma and Baller Steve, maybe even find a kill on the Poison for his troubles here. One more shot will do it. He's going to stay aggressive just by himself some time. The flashbang, all that's used here from Sanguine. Hype Unit used Illusory Rift, Dragon Punch, and a certain dominance. Healing not quite there. Stigma finds the final shot, but Hype Unit are at 72%. Hype Unit didn't get enough kills to warrant pushing yeah. that far forward. Tay potentially got caught in by the Inara. Vayne now gets knocked in, but Seismic Crash is coming in to try to, st to stagger this just a little bit more. Pain barely makes it away on Drogo. Survival reset gets him out, and Dome Shield by Sanguine just a little bit more space. The kills might come rolling in for them now. Yeah, they have, they've forced everyone from Hype Unit back. Might be time for reanimate here. Dethroner says yes, but he's not in range. A good wall keeps them zoned back. 72% for 
for Sanguine now as Dethroner tries to make his space through. Tay drops down Dethroner at 10% health. That'll certainly spell the end, and nobody in range from Hype Unit and Sanguine are able to surpass their point total from the last few games and find themselves a first win. I think that's a great example of why this map is so divisive, because yeah. so many people don't like the pressure that it puts on the mid fight. Sure. Tay gets just a little bit too forward from that window side, maybe mis miscounts the amount of damage yeah. he can take. The game's over. Like that, yeah. one misstep can just lose you the game. I mean, it was it was a pretty. I mean, it was a good zone. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, do you maybe just not go that far forward? You say, all right, we forced them back. Let me just hang back a little bit. As soon as he pressed shoulder bash, it was probably over. Yeah. <laughs> he got he got poisoned low, but there was too many people there to peel from. Even yeah. if he traded, they still had a lot of people close that could have gone in too far around the corner, just not able to follow it up. I thought he did great, great yeah. throughout that. It was just Absolutely. that one little misstep that can throw things away. Well, like you said, that's Ice Mines. Big game for my man, Baller Steve. 40,000 healing over his counterpart on the hype unit side. 15, 15 streak for him, 15 streak for Vayne on the Inara, who I thought uh, had a very good game as well. And you look back at the draft, take away Barrick and Nara. I mean, that is that that is point tank. That, that yeah. is what they do. And that forces, you know, an Ash and a, and a Terminus for hyping it. You wonder how much of that maybe came out to play here. Maybe. I think a potential Mando could have been better. Yeah. Because you could combo that with your Drogos as well. You have that Immortal Dragon Punch kind of classic. But right. either way, both those point tanks, Nando term, they both kind of fall apart to, to Strix, to a sniper. If Edge is losing those fights, which I thought he was getting the better of, but Stigma Strix just able to put out so much damage and so hard for them to collapse on. Yeah, 14 and 7, one of the best snipers in the league to be sure. For Stigma. And 116,000 damage. I mean, he was 30 or so beside or behind the Knessa or, or the, the uh, Drogos, excuse me, on the opposite side. But, but being able to do that much damage in a game where there's just so much pressure in your face, certainly something to look at. 2.7 KDA for him is very good. And the shots that hit, they were the important ones towards the end of the game here, plugged away at some of the frontliners. Helps heal everything else. Nice with the buff. Yeah, it's so tough to, I think. And the sustain of Strix, too, just being able to kite away when he was getting pushed, go stealth. Yeah. Maybe those 400s from Ash are only hitting for 200 if you're not getting those direct shots. It gets you out. Yeah, absolutely does. And gets Sanguine their first win in this set again. I mean, Hype Unit steamroll through game one, steamroll through game number two, and tense moments there towards the end. A much more even draft. I think Sanguine set themselves up better for success for sure. in this game. You're not going up against the terrifying composition that was Hype Unit in game number two. One more game maybe for Hype Unit. See if they can seal things up right after this break. Skillshot, the official production partner of the Paladins Minor League. Welcome back, guys, to the Paladins Minor League. Of course, I'm here, Fawn. It's been a very, very interesting match, Game 3. I mean, it is Ice Mines. Sanguine were able to get their first game. And despite the slash lines, we were talking about it a little bit, Gore. Hype Unit did well. Yeah. Both Edgem and Payne did really, really good. They fragged out completely, but Ice Mines is just too unforgiving. It's not only unforgiving, but when you look at it, you know, positive slash lines for your DPS usually is going to translate to a winning fight, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, you just had too much pressure. Dethroner and Tay, when they got eliminated, like right. it was just enough time. And like you said, with Ice Mines being very unforgiving, that they'd just be out of the fight. They wouldn't mm -hmm. be able to contest the point. They wouldn't right. be able to fight it. And so Sanguine were winning point fights kind of haphazardly. Like sometimes it didn't feel like they were going to close it out, but then they'd find the right picks at the right, right. time. And 
seal the deal. And that's kind of what happened towards the end there. Right, exactly. I mean, they were able to get a lot of damage off. They got the picks. I mean, we saw that both Edgem and Payne had huge, yeah. huge damage numbers, just like they have for the past couple of other games. But at the same time, I mean, it was you, you made a good per, made a perfect point. Once the Throner was gone, once Tay was gone, it was a lot harder for them to really try and follow up after that, especially since once you're dead on Ice Mods, you have to make it all the yeah. way back to the point to fight to be able to try and win. However, the game's already said and done. Three games already out of the way. Let's see what we have in store for us for game four in terms of map picks. Surfer Beach, nice. And this is something I – so I have some high expectations going to be set right now. Uh, first off, for Sanguine, I mean, you, this is uh, not necessarily do or die, but, I mean, you're you're looking to be number one. Like, that's right. that's the whole end goal of this, to be able to go to qualifiers, to, to, to fight for a spot to, to try to become a world champion. Right now, you have to be doing well. So Sanguine, they have two maps potentially separating them and kind of – well, not necessarily sealing the deal, but – Stopping Hype Unit from doing right. so. Like, Hype Unit are, at this point, just maybe a few wins away, set wins away from solidifying first for this region. And now you've given them, you know, control of where to go. They're going to their one, to one of their stronger maps. The bands are starting to get a little more wonky and mm -hmm. flavored. Makoa is going to be open. Like, it's the stars are lining up for them here. Yeah, I mean, they get rid of <laughs> – they do get rid of the fear. I mean, the stars aren't lining up for Genos in this case because he's banned once again. We see him on the ban list once again. I mean, last game he wasn't banned. Now – it's okay. Go uh, it's okay. He's, he's, <laughs> poor Genos. Yeah. He's just like, I finally out of my – okay, you guys are going to go play without me? All right, well. All right, know, all right that's fine. Next you time. Know. Ne next time. Yeah, just next game, right? But then he gets banned once again, <laughs> just very sad, soaking off in his corner. Poor Genos. F and chats, please. However, yeah, exactly. Well, Gore's doing it right there. Poor Genos. F and chats all around. McCoy gets picked first for Hype Unit. Both Willow and Khan are also picked uh, on Sanguine's side. Now, Willow, once again, she actually ends up making it through, which is interesting because we've seen Genos and to Willow band together. Yep. But now they've just opted to let her through. Tell me a little bit about the mindset as to why. I mean, they've got rid of Cassie, obviously, so to stop Makoa. She Willow still exists in some yeah. realm of controllable, right? <laughs> right? Uh -huh. Genos can get out of hand, although I, I would admit I think he's still on that area. It just comes down to the map, what impact he can have. I'd actually argue we've seen Genos this year specifically flourish on Ice Mines. Yeah. He has had some very, very phenomenal Don't games. Vex ask. comes to mind, Viral comes to mind, yeah. Cuss comes to mind. They will win the game for their right. team. But it comes down to, are you that kind of support player? Do you play aggressive? Do you play passive? Is Moldamba maybe going to feel better for you? Willow we is going to be able to slip through Cassie. Test. Everyone has a Cassie. Everyone on Sanguine specifically up. can play it really well as well. Same thing for Hype Unit. But it goes well against Makoa, and it goes well against Anara. You kind of pull something out Some from under them, and now. you give yourself maybe a little lead. Willow, in this case, is... I guess the lesser of two evils at yep. the end of the day. I mean, you're going to have to bite the bullet here. And hopefully, I think Hype Unit are Welcome thinking that with Maeve, with Leon, with Makoa, they'll just keep her out of the sky. Right, exactly. However, the thing is that I'd be a little bit worried about Ying, too, because I end up picking Ying on Sangle's side. So it'll give her a little bit more sustain. She'll yep. be able to stay in the fights a lot longer. But I mean, at the same time, though, Barrick is picked. Sangle, hovering whoever it is, I think is going to be last. Vivian, this is interesting. We don't see her as often, but I do like her into the Anara. I do like her into the Makoa. I don't dislike her. I don't know if it's exactly where my mm -hmm. mind would have been looking at the the rest of the draft. Right, but makes sense. There's nothing against her, right? Like mm -hmm. it's just kind of like the you are okay for this spot. Yep. There's nothing that's blowing up. Like Vivian's gonna be insane, but we've seen her do really well in the past few weeks. We've seen her do really well in the first split. Mm -hmm. That might be something Sanguine can pull out here and, and and flourish with. Right, exactly. I mean, hyped unit up two to one. Sanguine got their first game, but will they be able to continue the streak? Casters, what do you guys think? Well, that's the ultimate question, Fawn. I mean, if you were asking me in game three what you did, I said Hype Unit run away with it, but Sanguine showed some good fight. Big Ice Mines win for them. Now we go to Serpent Beach. They got to do it again. And then if they do this one more time afterwards, I think both teams have pretty decent drafts, but it, it's the new dynamic of between Makoa, Willow, and whatever other frontliner, or between Atlas, Willow, and whatever other frontliner don't get banned. Which of the three do you want to take? The app for Makoa, but Willow and Khan going over to Sanguine. Uh, so some interesting dynamics, Kresnik, already forming in the draft phase. I think the way some of the bands went made things a little bit easier for Hype Unit because clearly the last draft was, I think, to 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 starve Dethroner yeah. of, a, of a characters that he's good at. 
now he's back on Inara. You know, I, I, someone that he's been already proven on this set in. So things could be a little bit easier for Hive Unit, I think, going in. Uh, could look a little bit better on the point, at least. But Sagwin currently winning that duel. Barrack with the Ying sustain, able to put on a lot of damage. And it's almost uncontested by the Throner. Just doesn't want to walk into this Willow damage. It does move forward now, but you're right. The poison was just kind of free and clear to shoot down onto the Throner onto the point. Finally, he's able to work his way through. Sanguine stalled out at 45%. As the high ground still over to Sanguine, fighting back behind this waterfall. Tay forced into the shield. Not going to stay alive. Stigma finds the shots. First blood over to Sanguine. And that might just mean point number one as well. It's all down to the Throner to try to contest, but Stigma maybe has not stopped firing since this game started. Sanguine strike first. Really good aggression by them. Vivian so good at pushing while keeping up that consistent damage. Still going to be very tough, I think, to make things work on this offense. It's just so defensively sided that they really need to start staggering now. And Stigma is kind of looking for it, using his shield for this duel. Overpower unfortunately missed, though, and Tay drops down and finds Stigma. Yeah, it's important to get rid of the Vivian as Neo. Commanders grabs his way to safety defensively instead of offensively. Another kill for Hype Unit for Tay. And making that Vivian uncomfortable is certainly going to be the, the key of the game. Does that fall on Edgem here? I think so. I think the, the Leon is just so good at dealing with those flankers that it is definitely a lot of pressure onto him, yep. at least for for that. We'll have to see, though, how they how they end up doing it. Uh, and his also his ability to presence kind of the feet. Mm -hmm. Also moving in if they want to have to do that. Right now, though, Hype Unit holding that upper ground. Fayfly coming in, potentially from Sanguine, and they do use it to play on this outside angle that no one else on the team can really fight from. Yeah. Tay forced to use his shield the entire time, and the first pick actually goes to Sanguine, so great start by them, but Payne, I think, is in a good position to get into this back one. Yeah, and it's Edgem who dies first, but you're right, Payne, still alive, drops down, looking for the aggression onto Poison here. Big 1v1 coming up, but the mobility just too much. He actually tries to re-engage on the fight, but Poison a little bit too quick on that one. Turns around, finds the shot, paying. Gets nice and cleaned up there. Dread Serpent from Hype Unit used. Sanguine trying to maintain this high ground. Payload does inch a little bit closer. You, you know Tay is somewhere in your back line. Oh well, unfortunately so is Stigma. He just moves right on through that shield, finds the kill. Paying with the mobility. Trying to just make life tough for, uh, for Sanguine. Hasn't been able to do so just yet. The Throner gets tossed. As the payload now could move a little bit freer if Tay is not able to stay alive. They have to deal with, with Edge on this Oasis, though. So much of, like, rotation ability and damage coming from up there, but nobody's gonna... Okay, nobody touches the objective. Tay was trying to deal with the high ground. No one told him. No one in communication said, hey, please get on the cart. We need something to go on, and Sanguine just immediately convert that, and that's rough on Ice Mines. That's not the yeah. easiest point to push, so starting like that is, is amazing for them. And, uh, you know, I, I mentioned Stigma maybe didn't stop firing, and it was either if there was somebody not on his screen or he had to reload, and that's the way to play Vivian. For sure. Double kill seals up the mid. Not top damage in the game. That goes over to Edgem. Just shows you the consistency of Leon. The fact that at 4-2-2 two, and two, still can be 12,000 damage or so behind the top in the game, but but the block of four damage dealers there for Sanguine, both the front liners, both, the, both of the DPS above what Hype Unit are bringing. Yeah, which shows that they're just kind of winning all these engagements cleanly, not even giving Sanguine really a chance to spam, uh, sorry, not even giving Hype Unit really a chance to just to spam on them. Right. A lot more aggression up top this time from Hype Unit, but the hook is missed by Tay. That's the big equalizer, and it's out of the picture. Yeah, he's going to have to back off till that cooldown is back. The Throner says, no, let's go now. Good seismic crash locks up a couple. Faith Flight for Poison gets cut way short by Payan as Stigma continues his tear. Another kill. Trades this one out, Bauer Steve's trying to top everybody off. Back to the high ground engagement, and yet again, Hype Unit forced down low. Ancient Rage not ready to go. Dome Shield, though, is. That's a good wall to stop Neo from moving forward, but I'm just going to jump right on over it. There's still enough mobility there. T-Mac has the Dread Serpent ready. Going to use it onto Neo, and that'll get him a kill. Onto the con, 93% for Sanguine, so Hype Unit need to drop down now, and they cannot step off for the rest of the game to Throner is the first to fall here on the re-engage. Vayne is just an absolute force on the objective right now, been capping this entire time and helping them get all these kills. Poison needs to be so careful right now, getting low, but Payne finds him. Vayne gets another on the objective, and with the con coming back in now, it's going to be really tough for them to be able to contest this point. That's the healer might go down, but a great juke! They're yeah. at the last second by Steve. Wow, the front lines from Sanguine starting to wake up a little bit in this set. Hype unit steamrolled them early on here, and now Sanguine one point away from tying up this set. 
It's a good overpower as well on the edge him. That's pretty much all of Hype Unit's presence. Payne had a good mid fight there. They don't have too much of that really long range poke, and this payload is gonna move pretty quickly. The timing of the stagger is brutal too. Because look, I mean, Poison's up here uncontested. You would never want to see this. But Tay has to use his dash to cross, and he's half HP, and now he can't follow this up. Poison could just keep spamming this choke. Every good one dodge. shot is making this duration just a little bit longer. Pain kind of abusing his mobility, but Sanguine have the high ground firmly in their control, and that's the best case scenario for the offense. Hey, you rarely see that on offense. It's normally the defense that just chills up high. Get back here. But right back down. Ancient Rage just gives him some healing, no kills. The stigma starting to light up this lineup as well. There's a Fae Flight from Poison. If he rains down onto the throne or finds the last bit of cleave damage, and that could spell the end. A double kill from Poison is getting Sanguine moving in the right direction. Payload's going to go in, and Sanguine's going to tie this one up. What a turnaround. That, that Ice Mines was really a, just a momentum killer for Hype Unit. Sanguine looked, looked great that game. They had all the answers to every play that Hype Unit tried to do. And then, you know, the first pick, Makoa has Kind, kind of gone by the wayside this set. You look at Sanguine, who first picked it on Warder's Gate, answered back with the Atlas. This time it is the, the Willow Khan that's answered uh, with the first pick Atlas. So, I mean, all this, you know, you draw lines all over the place. But the first pick, Makoa, just hasn't really found its value yet. Yeah, for sure. They weren't even without Atlas on the board. Like, yeah. Like was mentioned, they just couldn't make it work. Tay wasn't really finding the hooks that he needed to, only doing, like, what, 28? more damage than, than Payne was. So good damage on that part, but I think it's also part of Payne kind of getting kind of getting shut down. He, he yeah. found some dive right. targets, but I mean, Steve put on the juke boots a little bit later in that mid <laughs> to just kite him around. And going into Stigma with that constant fire, that's going to be yep. Maeve's biggest weakness. If that DR isn't hitting in burst damage moments, if you're just getting consistently shot right. at, you're, you're not living as much as you would be against other, other DPSs. And I also look at Vayne at 207. I noted his objective time was in the 183 seconds or so. And the next highest on Hype Unit was Dethroner at about 28. They fought from the point and then barely ever gave it up. And yeah. I know some of that time, you know, goes towards payload pushing and things of that nature. But not only kill-wise, but just objective-wise, Sanguine, start to finish, did not move very far from what they needed to get done. Definitely on the back of the Willow, being able to constantly spam as well. On the, like we saw in that first mid fight, Dethroner just did not want to go to the point. He he was trying so hard to just like, I want to, oh, dead zone's there, ah, so yep, much yep, damage, right. and just could not find what he needed to. And you can just tell this is why Willow is such a ban and pick priority. So much pressure, the only 100% cauterize in the game, just all in the hands of this really mobile DPS. And, and that's a the, the buzzword on Serpent Beach is always mobility. And yeah. you noted the, the overpower on uh, to the Leon opened up so much space. You never, if you're on defense, you never want to see essentially everyone from the pushing team up on your <laughs> high ground that early on, because that's that's your benefit. That's your defense's advantage is when you're able to just leave from base and fire down. Didn't quite have it there. A 4-0 from Sanguine. Tie this one up. Tiebreaker right after this break. Alienware, the official PC provider of the Paladins Minor League. Welcome back, guys, to the PML. Sanguine giving Hype Unit a little bit of taste of their own medicine and a very, very clean 4-0 sweep on Serpent Beach, not giving them any room to be able to fight back in this case. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see a fifth game. 
Yeah, I mean, Sanguine are doing, uh, at that point, their best to right, <laughs> just yeah. completely control Hype Unit. I think that was one of those things. You can look at Ice Mines maybe as like a stumble and a trip, mm. and Serpent Beach was the full fall there for Hype Unit. Right. So this is their chance to kind of pick themselves up, brush off that last mm, game, yeah. and maybe seal the deal and kind of keep themselves rolling. But for Sanguine, it's their chance to find a reverse sweep throughout this set and and, and control and a, and a solid win in the PML. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, they've been working hard. And to be able to beat Hype Unit, if they end up beating them, of course, that's going to be extremely huge for them. The yeah. first loss for Hype Unit, if they do manage to do it. But we're going to see where we're going for the last game for game five, ladies and gentlemen, and see what we have in store for us. going to be Jaguar Falls. Now, this is interesting. Like, mm -hmm. so ending in a very similar play style to where the set began. Like, mm -hmm. looking at... I want to say the the first map specifically for Bright Marsh. I expect Hype Unit to have a lot of strength here on Jag Falls, and I think that I mean on its own is going to have to be reflected here. Like Sanguine, kind of have to try and predict some of these right. things against Hype Unit. I think it's also worth noting uh, with Flanks kind of maybe out of the question with Torvald kind of out of scope. I think he's in this area where. On certain maps where maybe you could pull out something like Talus can be good on this map if you put Talus with a Torvald who you know is going to make it through now, you keep that in your pocket, all of a sudden you can kind of take that. I don't know that any the of these teams are going to have anything prepared like that immediately. I think we're going to have to watch Torvald way off to the side right, before we even see any kind of strategy like that come out. But when Jaguar Falls comes through, like anything can happen. It kind of right. just opens up the, the playbook. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, Makoa being picked first on Hype Unit. Saying what I'm going to go for the Cassie, trying to counter out the Makoa with the shielding, of course. And really, we're just trying to see who they're going to try to go for. Third pick here, Khan. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, that's pretty... That's pretty. It's pretty good lineup right now. If just based off of looking at yeah. only two characters, I think Makoa's more potent here than he was on Serpent Beach, just okay. as a general map, like gen, I guess generic map you change. This one's a little closer. Uh, okay. Bomb King also first off very good for Pan, very good for Jaguar Falls. Yeah. So I like so far the bow that they're putting on this map. Grover. I like as well. I mean, heals through walls, heals everything. Like, Hype Unit are just kind of hitting the, the tick marks of Jag Fall's play style. And as long as they can get Grover into a good position, he can heal anyone on the side fights Time and the point, charge. all without having to really reveal himself and make himself vulnerable. Right, exactly. I, I like the McCoy, I like the Bomb King, I like the Grover as well, because it's telling me that Hype Unit's comfortable. A lot of these characters, at least Grover, I mean, T-Mac, being on the Grover, of course. I mean, Bomb Wait, King being there as well on Payne. He's well known for that. We've seen him have some pretty amazing performances on Jaguar Falls, just playing off of the Bomb King in general. Makoa, once again, being picked first for them on Hype Unit side. But in response to that, they have the Ying, they have the, the Barrett. They're looking for sustainability in their fights, right? Clearly off yeah. of that Ying, Illusory Rift's going to play. That's, that's going to be huge. Honestly, I like this Leon. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at Sanguine specifically for me, it feels like a Drogo's kind of slots in right there, right? Mm -hmm. Leon comes through. Bomb King doesn't deal with Drogo's too well. Makoa can hook him down, but he can just thrust right back up. Right, exactly. Leon is the, the consistency of I can hit you wherever you are in elevation. Your but it does still seem like they're feeling it. I mean, it, it just – he fits so perfectly in there. And when you look at it, I mean, what blasters do you really have left to, to kind of go down? You could look at Pip who admittedly might work out well. We've seen him do well here. Then it becomes like the weird ones, like maybe you want to run Eevee, but Eevee doesn't right. really get picked on this map. Drogo's just kind of had to be the one. Right, yeah. I mean, I completely understand that. Sanguine hype unit, two to two. Regardless of how this game's going to go, somebody's going to end up winning. Here we go, right in the game five. Fawn, when you're right, you're right. And right <laughs> now, it's absolutely no, no exception. Game five, yeah, I guess there's some world in which both teams lose, maybe a remake. Will we get all the way through it to go back right? I mean, there's definitely an area where, where that becomes less of a certainty, but uh, he's absolutely correct in this case. One of the two teams coming out on top, either Hype Unit live and survive the reverse sweeper. Sanguine, see it on through. One last game, Jaguar Falls to decide it. It's Makoa again. Hype Unit fine with going Makoa first, as I think you still should be. Sure. Big game Cassie, though. That's going to be tough to fight through. Yeah, especially since they also have the the Drogo's Dragon Punch to mm -hmm. take down the Ancient Raging Makoa. I've no, I'm normally a little bit more against the uh, the Drogo's on this map. At least recently, I feel like it's too easy to play inside against Worm Jets. But mm -hmm. I feel like we're, we're gonna be we're seeing combustible now because of that efficiency move to the base kit. Drogo's significantly better on this map now. You can even play inside and just play to knock people around. It looks like that might be what they're gonna do. Yeah, he he didn't connect on the first uh, little bit of damage there, but. At least showing that uh, 
He's going to be trying to play from, from some of those side angles. And Hype Unit, honestly, maybe on the opposite side, could be playing that, that way as well. When you have a yep. Grover on your team, I mean, obviously you're – you're kind of fighting around that in the, the certain situations. Mm -hmm. uh, so not too much to go off of. Literally just poke damage uh, to begin this game. But uh, the combustible Drogo is obviously a thing to look at. Worm Jets sometimes comes out on Jaguar Falls. But do you think uh, combustible is the right choice here? For, <coughs> excuse me. For sure, I think. Just being able to spam people in the rooms, knock them off the point. Also, indirect damage onto mm. the pillars. Like if they're kind of grouped up maybe outside of dark. Sure. You can knock them over back into the corner and get your team a little bit more room. Definitely the play here. I could see a universe where you where you argue for Fusilade and just spam the doorway and have them walk into We've it. Seen some of that actually. We, yeah. Well, that was what that was. Fishiko on. Fishiko. On yeah. Bright Marsh, on and, Bright they, and they lost. <laughs> yeah. That was before the buff. The buff You're to right. base Drogos. To be fair, so maybe it'll work. But knocking Tay into a position to hook is not what you want to be doing with that for sure. So Drogos for Makoa trade. Hype unit seemingly okay with that because that leaves the Throner free and clear to fight from this point. Payan just playing those edges. He's going to try to poppy bomb his way out. A couple more bolts would have spelt doom for the Bomb King and now he's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Neo on this left-hand side here. He's going to let his Makoa do a lot of the heavy lifting here into the shield. He goes to Throner's joining in on the front as well. Hype unit now enveloping around the con. You got to be careful. Plenty of damage behind you. You can't focus too much on what's up in front, and Neo finds the kill on Tay. Staying alive somehow throughout all that duress. The Throner finally finds the kill. 60% for Hype Unit as Sanguine look to retake. Khan just has so much early game sustain. I was originally going to say, well, Neo backed up the wrong way. He backed up towards the right. enemy team, but it just bought barely enough time. Stigma, great flank, catches the King Bomb while it's being cast. I think maybe on the back end of the scout, they knew where he was going to be. Tay back from spawn manages to catch Stigma, but right now Sanguine have the healing and the positioning. And Baller Steve has stayed alive throughout it all. Is able to blink his way through. Good healing, great healing from the Whirlwind. Keeps Tay nice and topped off there. Dragon Punch, though, it's not going to save you. Oh, the wall does, though. He's not able to see his way through. Here's the overpower. That one connects on a Tay, but might get stunned out before he's able to use it. Finds the kill, but finds the damage as well is paying. 90% for Sanguine. They're missing a frontliner. Both teams are. Good Poppy Bomb to get Vayne out of. Uh, out of range here, drops down the dome shield as this fight continues. If they win this, it's on the back of that poppy, buying just enough time for the Thurner to get the touch, but Vayne's still on the point. So hard for them to contest, and Sanguine get it. So smart by Neo, yep. by the way, when he did that overpower. People were probably thinking, why did he just hold on to it when a King Bomb was coming? Well, if he threw it, he might have been stunned and didn't have a chance to get away. Because he waited, he was able to be CC immune right. through the detonation of the King Bomb. Didn't end up saving him, but it gave him a chance that yep. he wouldn't have had otherwise. It's a, a small six, a split second play that uh, not a lot of people probably would have thought of right in that moment. Like you said, doesn't end up paying off. It still dies for his troubles, but Sanguine get on the board first. Now three points away from completing that reverse sweep. Flower Steve, the only one streaked out in this game at five. One, zero, four, illusory rift. That tells me Sanguine's looking to go. Good hook from Tay. Gets Khan pulled right into the team fight. Edgem pokes out some damage as well. This is looking to get aggressive in the back line. The Ancient Rage might just be countered out by the Dragon Punch here. Can't find the kill. The in clone baits him out just a little bit, and Sanguine yet again winning another fight. Great peel from Sanguine to keep Stigma alive, too. Just goes down at the end to T-Max axes from spawn, but T-Max actually does get away, so time now. Sanguine can push the card for a bit, but the timing of the deaths of Hype Unit is going to make this tough. Makoa is going to have to be, one, be the one that can test the card if they want to stall it out, and it looks like He's going to let it ride for just a little bit. Damage on Vayne to force him back, but a lot of cap time so far for Sanguine. Poison hasn't been able to feel comfortable on this now left-hand side. His right, when we're from their perspective, Stigma forced back as well. There goes the Drogos. You mentioned they've been bullying him since he's tried to kind of rear his head. And, I mean, that's sort of what you're missing. He still has his mobility, but you don't have the essential unlimited mobility that Worm Jets provides. Uh, so you definitely have to pick and choose your angles a little bit more carefully on the Drogos. Vayne now getting staggered out in the back line. And even, even if he choose, chooses to run Worm Jets, it, it's been nerfed at, at base. Right. I mean, they've removed the faster regeneration right. on the boosters. You can have a build that's explicitly around it, but then you, I think you lose out. You lose on, a lot. You lose on spit reset. I think that's the biggest thing. Being able to have that double cleaving 900 damage across their entire team is, is pretty big. And Great Rockets by Poison actually knocking back the Leon back to the spawn edge. Has to wait a little bit and actually might be walking into some tank aggression, but the Throner perfectly there to peel him, keep him alive. But Segway now setting up for a pretty potentially good Ooh. offense. 
Poppy Bomb nearly connecting. Did connect on a Neo, but Commander's Grab puts him right back onto the map. Stigma follows up with a kill as well. Good long range hook forces the tumble out from Cassie. And there's the whirlwind for Hype Unit to try to stay in this fight just a little bit longer. Look at Edgem, he's taking an aggressive route here. Poison, he hears the call from his teammates. Unfortunately, did not realize Enlightenment would catch him there. Baller Steve finishes off that kill, but Payne's back into the engagement. And Hype Unit with one, two, three, maybe even four. They're going to seal up this defense and tie up this game. Fortunately for them, the only ultimate they used to try to convert that was the Illusory Rift. Charges way faster than Seismic Crash, so definitely best case, I would say, there. It's that good little hook by Tay earlier. And him hitting his hooks, I think, are key to why this yeah. isn't going the same way that Serpent Beach was. Tay was missing a lot of those like key hooks on Serpent sure. when he was trying to push and push that high ground. Now that he's connecting them, you can see the difference. I mean, that's Makoa for you. It is a risk when you play against it. Either he's going to connect everything and the game's unwinnable, or you're going to be able to play around it and it's going to be a liability. Well, a little A, a little B here for Tay up to this point at 2 4 and 8. He goes. T Mac at 2 0 11. Lots of uptime for that healing from Hype Unit. The Whirlwind's pretty spot on for what they've needed here. About halfway there on that ultimate cooldown. The Throner uses the Seismic Crash just to seal things up. Quick look at the Sanguine Ultimates. Tells you Dome Shield, Overpower, and Dragon Punch are all ready. Those are some potential fight-winning Ultimates from them. I would expect them to hold on to the Dragon Punch, maybe to deal with Ancient Rage, and a very clumped up yeah. play from them. And that could be really disastrous with King Bomb Ancient, Ancient Rage coming in to body block some of the damage. Pain tries to go through, but all they get with it is Tay, actually. Dragon Punch now to equalize, but they oh, swings no. right in Poison's face and takes him down. Wow, big shots from Pay and stop the Dragon Punch right where it's at. Neo might just have the one. Uh, just icing on the cake kill here. They're going to stagger him out as heavy as they can. A few more shots from Pay and seal it up. Tried to use the overpower, and it looks like it went on to cooldown. It, it, uh, if they die while they're coming, if you die while they're coming to you, or if they die while they're coming to you, you go, you get the the I miss refund. So he's going to be at 30%, 33 now. Wouldn't have mattered. I, I mean, if no, he died, sure. right? <laughs> but uh, did go back on to cooldown. If there, were, if it was any longer, if there was still a fight to be had, maybe a little bit more impactful. Uh, but if nothing else, he's back to around 50% there. So just maybe trying to stagger out Payne on the uh, the next fight attempt. Doesn't work out. Still a seven streak burning away for the Bomb King. Only Scout ready for Sanguine. Whirlwind and Enlightenment, though. Could maybe tilt things. Just an execute, really, for Edgem. And Stigma and Edgem, they've had a pretty fun duel to watch. Edgem this time around getting the shorter end of that stick as Stigma returns some damage onto the Leon. Stigma playing really smart, too. Just not overstaying his welcome, taking the two pot shots and then rolling away with the low HP reset from some sort managed to get. Now Sanguine, they don't want to lose this advantage. They're going to keep going in, going to stagger to throw in here more than likely. Everyone else in Hype Unit having to give up quite a bit of ground. And now they're backing up because they know that the spawners on Hype Unit are coming to the left. They mm -hmm. don't want to get surrounded and pinched too hard. They don't want to give away uh, that ground just because they got a little overzealous from one pick. This is a, a heavy high-res expo qualifier. Lots of implications to be found here. Sanguine needing to win this one. Certainly not all said and done after this, but you're relying on Hype Unit to lose out. Destiny's kind of out of your hands here if you're Sanguine. And you lose this matchup. Some good shots from Stigma. Don't get him the kill. He's forced to tumble backwards as Payne naturally gets aggressive with the Poppy Bomb. He only has 400 health, and he figured, all right, the damage follow-up is there. Certainly was. Neo now back to respawning in an aggressive zone. He has the King Bomb. Might wait to use it. Payload. Now getting very, very close to going through. Here comes the Dragon Punch to try to open up that door a little bit. Does connect onto the throne and trades out his life, as we so often see with the Dragon Punch. Another good hook onto Neo, forced into the battle shout to give himself some healing. And Edgem hasn't been forced to move. Still clean bill of health for him as he finally slides to the right. Hype unit. They collect to back off here, and with 30 seconds left, still have some time to give it one more shot. Good timing on the retreat, too. Right when the respawn comes back in, so they know that they're always taking a fair fight. When the Thurna comes back in, they might actually be willing to spend some ultimates here. Overpower used, and it actually did not connect, so another ult kind of off the table for Sanguine. Neo trying to equalize here, but he's just playing so far away from the rest of his team. Finally, Poison comes in to help him and actually gets Tay before he can get the Ancient Rage off. Yeah, the Ancient Rage was used at the last possible second there. Still off of cooldown, but Hype Unit not in range. T-Mac tossing himself around, certainly. He's not going to give them a good shot, and Hype Unit failed to fail the offense. Sanguine successfully defend, and yet again, tied up at two. 
T-Mac used the vine to carry the momentum from the knockback he had before. So he basically slingshotted himself with his own gravity straight into the enemy team. Beautiful. Mostly just unfortunate, but it was uh, kind of funny to watch that, that tree going timber straight. And that was his only death. It was, it was his only death. I mean, maybe he was just throwing it away. Th thankfully, he doesn't really need to worry about streaks. As a support, even if you're on a, a 70 streak... If it's all, it only matters the amount of kills you have. Right. So you can, you can die at that point. You don't need to jump off the map uh, or or fling yourself slingshotting into the enemy team. And ultimate wise here, Whirlwind and Seismic Crash actually used in an attempt on that last fight. So neither of them are going to be on the Five, table. But four, Hype Unit managed to win that last three, fight basically just two, on the back of King Bomb yeah. and Ancient Rage. And those two are still up for them. And it was uh, Pan following up Tay, who went all the way around Sanguine, forced in the back door of this right hand building here. Doesn't look just yet like they're going to try to do that and just stick to throwing her back onto the point. Sanguine moved to the left as well. There is a bit of a flank to the right here, and that's Edge of one more shot onto the Cassie. Would have sealed it up. There's Illusory Rift right into the Dragon Punch. Is he able to connect? Does not time out. Finds the kill and is able to get out alive. Dome Shield not really in an ideal position there. Forces them to elect a different route, but doesn't find a much point presence. In Ancient Rage, two out of two, or I should say 0 for 2. Still off of cooldown, but has not been able to find any fight value from it. 60% for Hype Unit, but a big fight from Sanguine keeps them in it. Honestly, this mid's kind of on the back of Steve. He was able to get healing onto Poison when he was going in for the punch. He hit him for 560 while he was going in, and he lived with 340. So yep. that healing, it, that was exactly enough to keep him alive. And then that little extra damage by him was probably what pushed Tay over the edge and not knowing he could live. 69% on the point now to throw to trying to go in, but actually taking a detour over to Dark. Everyone on Sanguine does get off the point to try to deal with Tay as he's There's Ancient Rage in the Rage. background, but he doesn't get anything out of it except Payne finding Neo. Yeah, Payne there for the follow-up. Everyone from Sanguine so zoned out here. Hype unit not close to capturing just yet. That's not, a good wall. It's going to get them to 84%, make it 87. Some good damage. Blast him off the point. 90. They actually might have been able to secure it. It probably would have been around 99. But if nothing else, stops them at right around 90. As Sanguine looked to re-aggress. Another baller, Steve Ultimate. In this fight, keeps Sanguine in it, but there's the Whirlwind from Hype Unit. Gets them some presence. Edgem, speaking of presence, with the kill onto Stigma. One more shot onto Poison will do it. Dodges out the Enlightenment. Does not find the last shot. Edgem maybe had to reload. Paying with a double kill, though. Make it three for the Bomb King in Hype Unit. They're going to win this mid. I feel like I've been underselling Bomb King in general, but when Pain plays like this, I mean... I guess I can't really ignore it anymore. So good on these maps with all these choke points, areas that he can kind of zone out. When you're forced to get close in that mid fight, that's when he's going to excel. It eat more easily confirmable bombs and potential play with the King Bomb. What good a hook, hook. Wow. by Tay. The jumping hook, maybe a little bit of an accuracy towards that, but still connects it onto Stigma and another staggered kill on the poison. Yeah, this is starting to steamroll here. Sanguine have to stall this out, paying poppy bombs through the base. Electing not to fight through a window anymore. A bit of a, a port in the storm here for Sanguine as things start to slow down, but the payload's not one of them. Minute and 50 seconds left looking to move through that first choke point here. Sanguine are, are, are thinking carefully about extending too far out of their base right now. Yeah, for sure. They don't. They can't give anything up right now. We know that their potential HRX dreams are on the line, or at least the part of it that's going to be in their control. Poison goes in for the Dragon Punch, catches to Throner as Stigma finds Edge in the back. So. The Ted has been, the tide has been stemmed. Right. Good for now. Not the Ted. I'm sure he's a very nice guy. Yeah, poor Ted. About him oh, right man. now. Why well, you got to do Ted like that? <laughs> Sorry. You're right though. The the tide is regressing here as our hype unit. Actually, some good shots. Nearly found poison. Minute and ten seconds left. Hype unit looking to push one more through. Seal up this set. Sanguine trying to tie it up on defense. We've seen some four threes. We've seen some four O's. It's either been all or nothing effectively throughout this set. One or the other. And this one's looking like the other. Type unit have Whirlwind, King Bomb, ready to roll. No pun intended, or maybe intended. Lucery Rift, Dome Shield, Overpower. Here's your King Bomb. Pan looking to find somebody, realizes there's nothing to be found. I'm going to do the old roundabout and roll on back to my team. There's the Poppy Bomb to change his angle. Actually, might find some sticks. But he's able to stumble out there at Stigma. There's the Whirlwind to get them in. The Dome Shield drops down, but the Ancient Rage answered out with by Tay. Poison finds the first blood in this one, and we'll have Dragon Punch here in just a moment. It's only Edgem who's fallen off here, but Pan, the little cheeky flank around the backside, might be able to find a kill on a Cassie. Does get Stigma with that one. Poison plugs away some damage. That's an important missed hook 
from Hype Unit, but Payan, he's still alive somehow. In the back line, he has a double kill, and this one, T-Mac gets cleaned up. Baller Steve comes back into the fight and may have just stalled things out for Sanguine. Steve actually manages to make it out too, using the dimensional link knockback off the point, and Steve finds two in that Tay. The Throne are gonna go down to Stigma. All right, Steve. Gonna go to a 3-3. So many ultimates were traded, but that fight was so long that now we're in that zone where all these ults are gonna come up as the fight goes on. Yep. No one has 100% certainty of, of when they're gonna be up. Right. So many unknowns for both teams in this fight. Yeah, both teams are, and of course, we are privy to who has what ultimates, but their team only knows what they have through communication. Nobody on Hype Unit knows what Sanguine has. Nobody on Sanguine, except for maybe we haven't seen it in a minute. I mean, definitely some educated guesses. You'll know that Overpower will still be down, Illusory Rift. You'll bet that'll be up soon. Dragon Punch, haven't seen it, so that one's surely there. Hype Unit only have Seismic Crash ready, only have Enlightenment ready. And the battle for top Lost. damage still rings on. Everyone at 100 and mid-20s. Yeah, that's actually one of the closest damage fights I've ever seen, and really shows, I think, how well Stigma's been doing in some of these duels, because his shots are harder to confirm than Leon's, but still managing to stay in the lead. Both teams playing very clumped up, trying to be very safe. Yep. Kind of a renegades -y five man grouping on both sides. But Sanguine are starting to surround now. This is, could be a disadvantage, depending on how far they take this. Look how far back they are. They clumped. Illusor Rift maybe used a little bit early, though, so some ult value out of it. Dragon, Dragon Punch, punch no, a, yeah. on, a, on another, in another country. That was used in EU. We're playing in an N he NA here, Poison. He has to back up a little bit, but right now Sanguine do have point control. No Illusory Rift, no Dragon Punch, only a scout for Sanguine. You're right, though, point control. To Sanguine just for the moment. This is where Tay is looking to get aggressive. Missed the hook. That would have been a dead poison if that one were able to connect. But still fighting from the point here are Sanguine with 60%. Hype unit now getting their ultimates. Whirlwind most notably used here. Edgem flanking around from the rest of his team knows where everyone on Sanguine is. And he's going to try to find the angle. Payan does not connect. A bunch of ultimates out. A bunch of ultimates whiffing here. Good poppy bomb gets Neo off the map. And here's a seismic crash to follow up. Stigma so, so low into the corner goes Vayne and his health bar is absolutely melting here as Hype Unit look to take the fight and Hype Unit look to take the set. And there's no way Neo's going to touch at this point. The first team to finally break from that death ball and actually execute is the first team that wins. So many ults were missed back and forth in a row. I ult had any bearing on that <laughs> final fight at all. There was like a whirlwind that, you know, kind of hit, illusory rift, I guess, allowed him to move a little yeah. bit. But Poppy Bomb, that was huge on a Neo, but the follow-up from Hype Unit just collapsed. Honest, I gotta say, my favorite moment was when we were watching the teams kind of trading back and forth, and it's out of the corner of my <laughs> eye, we just see a Dragon Punch like, mm. <laughs> <It just laughs> as turns far away as it could right have Right on around. That, that's a conversation to be had, though. I mean, yeah. Dragon Punch is such an ultimate where you are forced effectively into the enemy team. I guess there's moments where you say, I'm, gonna, I'm probably gonna die for this, but getting X champion off the map is, is important enough. Yeah, it's, we have to basically judge your damage versus the impact of them. That's right. why you usually use it to take ultimates out of the field. Like, you know, mm -hmm. Inara has Seismic Crash, so maybe you'll go for her. Mako is using Ancient Rage, go for him instead. Just, you know, try to equalize things. And that damage race actually ended up in Poison's favor yeah. there by the end of the game. I think, you know what, that is, I think that's also kind of because of how they were playing. Those teams were on top of each other at the yeah. end of the game, and Poison was just getting combustible resets, so... Not right. too surprising there, but the first team to kind of split and strike and collapse on the team that was waiting was Hype Unit. Everything's so close. I mean, even if you look outside of the damage numbers decided by, you know, three, four, five thousand healing numbers as well. Very close. Paying on the Bomb King, you kind of mentioned it. Nobody else on Hype Unit with the, the flashiest slash line. I mean, 17, 6, and 12 is big. Everyone around that close kills and deaths. Edgem, of course, not the greatest kills to deaths, but some good damage. Bomb King, now something I think we got to look at. I think it's it's easy for a Bomb King to, to play in a this way. This is a great map, stats. to be fair. Yeah, no, for sure. This is a great map for BK, but the fact that he has indirect, so easily confirmable indirect damage. Well, okay, maybe not easily confirmable, but he's constantly giving out this indirect right. damage, right? It, it kind of plays into, into how your stats can end up looking like this. Obviously, you have to be as good as Payne to make this, these kind of plays happen, but... Bomb King is, is so strong on these maps with so many corners. He can just apply pressure that you can't really answer. Yeah, I mean, he he basically flanks around while the rest of his team is trying to, to fight forward. You don't yeah. you don't pin Bomb King as a poppy bomb in, in, in behind, but well, Payan plays it that way. I guess you do. I guess you have to. Old, old Bomb King. We're talking about yeah, right. like this is, the this is where dusting off the book. Right. 
Master's Land used to be able to poppy yourself basically from one side of the map to the other. I'm but, sad I missed out on that because uh, that sounds like a grand old time. 100% win rate Bomb King back then, so no, you're not. <laughs> you were you were Bomb King as a champion. You on Bomb King was 100% win no, rate or no, Bomb, King Bomb King as King a champion? I don't know which is worse. The fact rate. that Kresnik could win on Bomb King or that everyone won on Bomb King. One or the other. If Kresnik can do it, anyone can do it. You're not wrong. Just kidding. Big win there from Hype Unit. Puts themselves in a great spot for HRX qualifiers. Fun set three, set number four, right after this. Respawn, the official gaming chair of the Paladins Minor League.